Okay, guys, we are live! So for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I'll be your friendly... Or am I going to be your friendly... Um, I guess your friendly, friendly sergeant uh, today. Uh, because uh, today, we are going to be taking out for a spin for the first time on the channel. Renegade Game Studios' very cool G.I. Joe role-playing game. And uh, with me today are the stars of our... Uh, we're playing an adventure out of the core rulebook called Snake Pit. Uh, can't imagine what that portends, um, but um, I'll go the order I've got you guys on the screen here. Why don't you tell us who you are? Uh, who we so we're going to go through the process of character generation, but everyone has kind of a rough idea of who they're going to be playing in this. So why don't you tell us who you're playing, and also tell us what your experience with GI Joe is. Um, so uh, first up is Jamie. Hey everybody, I'm Jamie. Um, today I'm going to be trying out a new character switchback he's going to be of a covert ops background and he'll be sort of a commando um this is my first time playing in the essence uh 20 system or the gi joe game but uh as far as being a fan of it um i grew up you know in the 80s and woke up and watched the show after school um and had all the toys and was just i had all the comic books um so just one of my sweet spot of things that I really loved growing up and loved um, the message behind it and everything. So excited to play with you guys. Nice. Uh, oh yeah, and then Jeff, good point. Who's your favorite uh, Joe or your favorite character if it's not a Joe? Um, I I I, I, li I really liked um, Tunnel Rat. Actually, mm, I, nice. I thought he was very cool. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. Uh, next up is Will. Hi, I'm Will. <clears throat> Um, I'll be playing Mayhem, who is a um, Navy SEAL explosives expert kind of guy. Um, of course, I mean, I remember watching the G.I. Joe cartoons and, of course, the toys. I remember I was there with, you know, the very first wave uh, of them. I remember getting some of my first figures. Um, I, one of my favorite things with the toys was the itty-bitty decals. I really remember... You know, for the, the the vehicles and stuff, putting like these really small, <laughs> fine decals on everything to, um, you know, it's kind of like you were, you were building, which I always enjoyed because I always like Legos. So it's kind of like you were getting to build and customize stuff. So I enjoyed that. <clears throat> um, favorite character. That's tough. I mean, there, there's so many. The original version of Snake Eyes was cool. Um, a lot of those original Wave 1 and 2 characters. Um uh, Stalker, I always liked him. Mm. Um, so yeah, those were those were probably some of my favorite characters. Nice, uh, and alas, but certainly not least is Jeffrey. Hey everybody, I'm Jeff, and today I'm going to be making a character called Stage Show. He's going to be like a civilian type joining the Joes, who's a sound engineer, and he's going to use uh, weapons that use sound and maybe lights, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm. Special effects to uh, get Cobra. And my history with G.I. Joe is immense. Like, I'm exactly at that sweet spot age where um, my friends, we all had the toys. We all played with them. Uh, one of my neighbors was, like, a collector, and he had almost all the toys. So going to his place was, like, a big treat. And... Uh, my oldest friend, Kevin, like Snake Eyes, was his favorite character growing up of anything in any property, Transformers, G.I. Joe, anything. So uh, between those two, I would say, though, that I always ended up playing Cobra because, you know, the one guy had all the toys. So, you know, someone's got to be Cobra. And if your buddy always wants to play Snake Eyes, then the best character for you to play as is... So you can <laughs> nice. see this storm, storm shadow. shadow it's pretty bright <laughs> that's so awesome i'd say like my favorite guys were always uh storm shadow and you know destro the bad guys yeah. i like the bad guys they were really <laughs> cool man they <laughs> had and they were really tough like because cobra is like 80 percent like junker soldiers that just like stormtrooper types who are just getting wasted then the tough guy the the leaders had to be extremely tough because, you know, when you got all this fodder at the bottom that like these named Joes are taking <laughs> out, then when they get to the the leader, you know, they got to be really powerful, you know, taking on multiple Joes at once. 
And so the bad guys were where it's at. But, you know, and like, just to show the level, like, you know, we watched the cartoon, but like the first, one of the very first video games that would have been my favorite video game, my buddy had a Commodore 64 and there was a G.I. Joe game on Commodore 64. It was like, I mean, and I don't know if you guys know what games were like back then or mm, like oh, viewers. Yeah. Like you literally had to like know a guy who obviously knew a guy, knew a guy like down this long chain and he had copied onto floppy disk for you yeah, mm. a whole file of like, you know, you, so you'd get a disk from some guy and there would be 30 games on there or whatever he had in his library that he wrote to his little disk. And we had, my buddy got a disk from someone and one of the games on there was G.I. Joe, and it was phenomenal. <laughs> Had all the old school guys on there and the levels. And uh, in our minds, it's sure the graphics look great. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. Awesome. The um, hardcore G.I. Joe. Nice. <laughs> So for uh, for me, I uh, obviously watched a, the cartoon when I was a kid, uh, read the comic when I was a kid. My cousins were big into it. So uh, and we I can't remember what, what issue it was. It was 100 or something. So there was the big twist uh, issue where um, a bunch of the original Joes got killed uh, by I can't remember who, who the villain was. Uh, but th I remember that as a, one of the most like like, holy shit, comics I read as a kid. <laughs> and um, we, you know, we had a bunch of the toys uh, as a kid, um, but it's not uh, like it's. I, I would say I'm I'm not a like I'm a comic fan. That that's sort of what my superheroes and whatnot was my thing that I kept from my my childhood. GI Joe is not really one of those things I revisited all that much. So my knowledge of it, I've uh, tried to do some homework to make sure that I'm uh, I either am not forgetting things or bringing myself up to speed, um, but. Uh, the thing I guess I, I would note as well is that uh, there's been four or five major canons uh, with the show, uh, with the, the material as well, because you've got the toy content, like the, the back of the box, which was written by a guy named Larry Hama. Uh, there was the comic that was written by Larry Hama as well. Uh, Hama was involved at the time. Marvel had a deal with uh, Joe to help write out those the, the backstories for the stuff. And Hama, I think, was an art assist or like an assistant editor at the time, and ended up getting himself in because he's a veteran. Got himself into the role of writing all the backstories for these guys, in addition to writing the comic book. He wrote the comic for fucking years, and then came back to it when it switched uh, publishers. But there's also the cartoon. So there's the Marvel Comics canon. There's the cartoon. There was a relaunch in the early 2000s that was a gritty kind of where like Cobra Commander ran like a multi-level marketing <laughs> thing or something. <laughs> I remember enjoying it at the time. I don't remember. It's it's great. And then there's like, I, I shouldn't say there's not five. There's six. Cause there's two, at least two other cartoons as well. Not counting some of the like weird relaunches that happened in the late 80s, early 90s. So there's a lot of different iterations of these characters, but the thing that I, I like about this, and maybe it's just because they're playing to the nostalgia, but the role-playing game seems to push, uh, like push directly towards a, these iconic representations of these characters, and that's such a marketing buzzword kind of thing. But like the way they present and the illustrations they have of all the different characters in this, I can see them and be like, even though I haven't seen Duke or a representation of Duke in 25 years, I know it's Duke. And I know it's Scarlet, and I know it's you know Snake Eyes. So it, the game does a good job of having that kind of um, the freedom to present whatever version of Joe you've got in your mind. You can make it uh, fit. Um, and we, uh, the three of us, had talked to before. Four of us have talked beforehand too about the sort of tone that we're going to go for with this because Joe is all over the place, and we're leaning closer to the comics or to the very short-lived uh, GI Joe Resolute kind of thing. So a more of a more serious or modern techno thriller kind of vibe uh, and military vibe than the cartoon um, but yeah and then my favorite character I'm so fucking simple like Snake Eyes is my favorite I, I love fucking Snake Eyes <laughs> <laughs> uh, although a close second uh, only because of the aesthetic of it is the um, Crimson Guardsman uh, the Crimson Guardsman just always struck me as a fucking mm. awesome looking design because of that weird like Prussian army or like Crimean War style um, uh, uniform that they wear uh, and the idea that they hide amongst the public too. <laughs> like that was pretty, that was a, a pretty cool idea as a kid. Um, and I'll say as an aside too, this is more of a reference to uh, 
uh, the no, it's just, uh, this is run through the comics and the, and the cartoon as well. But um, uh, the name of the t of uh, the generic Cobra town in it, um, it wasn't Smallville. It was. Uh, do you remember what the name of the town was? It's what Cobra always called their like where Cobra base was hidden in America. Oh no! Is I it don't Springville? That. Springfield? I think Springfield, it might be. Maybe. But, yeah, uh, I think it's Springfield. The reason I mentioned is because I had yeah, so we got caught in um, my son for he's a uh, he works as a carpenter uh, or a um, uh, so he builds uh, fences and whatnot uh, for sometimes in the summertime, and Dex and he got a job working at this um, uh, one of these uh, communities outside of town in Calgary. So they build up these big block kind of districts and whatnot, and they're in the middle of nowhere, expecting that things are going to grow up towards it. And one day he forgot his uh, his it was his lunch or his keys or something like that. So I was like, oh, fuck it, I'll, I'll drive it out to you. I'll bring you your lunch. And I drive out there, and as I'm driving through this completely barren but fully built thing, I'm like, oh, my God, this is fucking Springfield. Like, this is where Cobra lives. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I told him that, and he's like, okay, well, thanks for the lunch. <laughs> yeah, Joe is not a formative part of his life. Uh, but, no, uh, he is the wrong generation yeah, for Joe. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, which is to say that uh, we're, uh, as far as our, our adventure is going to be, we're going to get things wrong about the canon. Uh, we also are going to get, uh, we're probably going to fuck up some things uh, uh, in the rules as well, but we will be reading them in between to make sure we, you know, if there's things that we are uncertain of, uh, we'll check. But uh, yeah, uh, the last thing I will say before we jump, dive into character creation is that this. So this week we got news. Uh, I mentioned Larry Hama's name. Uh, Larry Hama was in for surgery on his hand once again. From what I understand, it's not like life threatening, but he is in his mid seventies. Anytime someone that age is going in for surgery, it's always a a big thing. And with such a, uh, a huge, huge, huge influence that. Uh, uh, Hama had on making this whole, you know, these characters and this brand and whatnot. Our game is going to be dedicated to Larry Hama uh, because the we have nothing but best thoughts for him and his full recovery and uh, for him to get back at uh, writing and drawing sometime. I just noticed soon. even these new comics that I have are written by him. Yeah, they brought Hama back to uh, to write it. Like it's, it's one of those few runs. He didn't get the notoriety at the time that like Chris Claremont did on writing, you know. Um, x-men for such a long time but he wrote joe for 100 like at least 100 issues yeah. uh, and then brought back when idw had the the license they, he, they brought him back to continue that on after they gave up the whole cobra commander as you know multi-level marketer uh thing um i tried to find some of my old j joe comics but i couldn't find them before we started so mm. maybe before our next session i'll have them awesome out. nice 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 all right uh so with that guys let's let's uh make some joes here so um the uh, it, I will say that Roll20 does not, at the time of recording, have a G.I. Joe sheet. They have a Power Rangers sheet, uh, but I elected to not use that because I figured there'd be so a lot of kludging, and recent experience kludging on another game was uh, uh, cumbersome, so I, we figured we're just... The, the game is not nearly as complicated as what... Uh, uh, I think some are, so while it will be nice to get a sheet when it does come up, and uh, I understand Renegade is working on that... Um, we're not going to be making use of that today. Uh, we are using Roll20 to play the game, though. So character creation in this, guys, uh, involves going through a series of steps. Um, so the w w step zero, we'll, we're going to go through, uh, everyone has sort of their character mostly together here, or if not fully together, but we're going to go through the exercise anyway, just so everyone knows uh, each, uh, you know one another's character. We can check everyone's math uh, while we're doing this, and we can... Um, um, yeah, see the characters adjust if need be to, to adapt to each other's specialty so no one's, you know, stepping on anyone else's thematic uh, spotlight. I will say as well, a big thank you to my buddy, uh, Jared Rasher, uh, for sharing. He shared us uh, of the, um, he's with Gnome Stew and has the uh, What Do I Know YouTube channel. Uh, he uh, shared a really awesome uh, spreadsheet that he put together that had uh, all of the stuff for creating characters in this. And uh, as well as some like helpful like uh, you know callouts for rules and stuff like that. So Jared, thank you very much for that. Um, so the first thing we said in step zero is discuss with your GM and players uh, and other players who you want to play. And I think we've kind of done that already. So let's skip to step one. And why don't you guys each tell us about your character concept? Uh, starting with uh, Jamie, tell us about Switchback. What's your concept for him? Yeah, I, I kind of picture. Um switchback as sort of a cross between 
say alpine and tunnel rat somewhere in there he's like an outdoorsy person by nature and he's able to use his outdoor skills and knowledge to infiltrate places um okay. so that's where i kind of see him he's he's like covert and um so he, he he probably was influenced by both of them somehow um okay and and then yeah nice um, it, uh, do you have a um, nationality uh, in mind for him? Um, kind of, and, and anything else about his, uh, his background? Was he like a, I don't know, Olympic skier or biathlon athlete or something like that? Was he, uh, you know, just a backwoods kid? Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking he's like Swiss, and he spent a lot of time <laughs> in the Alps and. Uh, is just at home there in places like that. It's going to be great. We're going to have like the re the versions of these characters we'll play, and we can also think of what the cartoon versions would be. And your guy would be like, yeah. would you like some chocolate? <laughs> 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 uh, great. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, Will, why don't you tell us about uh, Mayhem? What's your uh, character concept for Mayhem? So Mayhem is, I mean, like I said, he's, he's, a, he's a Navy SEAL. He... Um, Growing up, he was a uh, he was a long haired metalhead, and um, he liked to um, fool around with chemicals, <laughs> and um, he got in trouble some with that. And so he kind of was the option of like, hey, you're going to jail or you're joining the military. So uh, so he joined up in the navy and and got into. Um, seal training and into explosives and he really is heavily into using explosives he's he's kind of um he's a little loud um and uh he loves to just you know blow open doors and holes in buildings and things like that um the way i see him he he like he uses like um grenade launchers and shotguns those are kind of his favorite weapons mm -hmm. um He's, he likes to be that guy who just busts in and blows something up and just makes a makes a mess. <laughs> nice. And I t is he American? Yeah, yeah, he's definitely American. He's definitely classic. <laughs> like I said, you know, classic American, um, you know, heavy metal kid, you know, who kind of was going one way and got his path corrected, and now he, now he does something good. Do you have a sense of where in the States he's from? <sighs> Not really. I was thinking he's probably... If I really had to think about it, he's probably from like um, probably the Northeast. Mm. If so I like Detroit, guess, Michigan, so or Detroit, or something like that. No, no, like New England, like um, oh, okay, yeah, like maybe like um, Massachusetts or something like that. <laughs> yeah, he's a masshead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but something where there's what do you some, know? Not you masshead, know, masshole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So somewhere up there in the New England area, I think, is kind of where he's from. Nice. Okay. And uh, Jeff, what's your character concept for uh, Stage Show? Uh, so Stage Show is a little older, been around for a long time. Uh, Going to be like a technical guy, know a lot of, you know, computers and uh, that kind of stuff, electrical engineering. And he works as, you know, his day job was he was a sound engineer. I'm going to say he worked with lots of big name bands, producing their shows, doing the lighting and the sound, and it, just a real genius in that field. And so he was sort of like recruited by Joe to help them with some sound weaponry or whatever, and mm -hmm. then sort of fell in fell in love with like being a part of the the military to you know help his country um defeat its enemies and so like kind of lives a double life now where like you know whenever the joes need him they call him in and he's there to be a part of it but you know he still does do the occasional rock show for his old friends where he'll you know still show up and help them set up their sound stage so mm. i see him getting along with mayhem a lot you know mm. mayhem will be oh, yeah. calling up a <laughs> metal band that he loves and it's like oh yeah those are pretty good guys you know, did their show in Detroit and whatever year, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and from you referencing it as uh, his country, I take it he's American as well? Oh, yeah, he's American for sure. Oh, where do you think he's uh, from? Um, Probably one of the big states like California or New York, like one of the more populous ones. Okay. Uh, I don't know, somewhere like that. Okay. All right. So then uh, the first thing we do then, guys, mechanically, is... 
we start setting our essences and in the essences are they, they don't really do anything specifically themselves, but they inform all the things that you're going to be doing in the game. Your skills all come from it. Uh, you have uh, 12 essence points to spend between the four essence scores, strength, speed, smarts, and social. And every point you put into that gives you one point that you can then assign to one of the skills under that category. So the, you're going to have a number that's there as well, but then it will also um, uh, translate into, uh, you can pick skills. Um, one thing I will point out that uh, is, is an important factor right now is your speed dictates how many actions you can take in combat. So if you want to be able to do a move and a free action, sorry, a move and a standard and free actions every round, you need to have a minimum speed of three or more. So just be aware that that's, something you, you, as you're sort of deciding where to go. They describe them as strength is uh, bodily power and endurance. Uh, speed is agility, balance, and reflexes. Smarts is awareness, uh, mental acuity, intuition, and, and analysis. And social is confidence, poise, charisma, and leadership. The other thing those numbers will do is they will inform your defenses. The four defenses that you have in the game uh, are toughness, evasion, willpower, and cleverness. Those will be modified by other things as well, but that's primarily uh, fed by the stats that you have. Under each of the skills, now do we have, oh, I should have put the skills in, but um, on the second to last page, the penultimate page of the rule book, there is a list of, there's the character sheet that has the different um, uh, skills in it. If you want to have more hit points, it's your health in this, it comes exclusively from the uh, conditioning skill so if you do want to play a tougher character a roadblock style uh you know uh meat shield kind of character just that's be aware that's how you get your hit points up uh it, also be aware that under speed initiative is one of your skills initiative is what you use for rolling initiative so if you want to be a quick acting character definitely invest in that otherwise um why don't you guys go ahead and assign your essences and talk us through what you're deciding mm -hmm. Oh, and you can also assign, this is one of the few parts of the character creation where you can assign skills wherever you want. Uh, certain skill points you'll get later on will be more restricted for where you're putting them. Uh, and each, let's see here, I believe each point gives you one step up on the ladder. So, and then, okay. the Game Master screen for this is actually pretty, uh, pretty good. It's really durable. And look at this, guys. Here's the GM screen Ooh. picture. Nice. Oh, wow. Man, that art is so good. Hey, guys. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, you're So, if we go with two speed, we'll be missing out on one possible action on every round. Exactly. But we'll be able to do two out of three. Uh, you will get a chance to do a standard and a move and to do a free action. You'd have to give up one of those. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like you could always do two out of three. Yeah. It is suboptimal for you to have a speed of three. Like the, I, the way I interpreted those uh, lower speeds, it's to model chumps like Cobra Troopers or the other kind of nameless okay. bad guys. Like uh, player characters, it's, it's not said, but it's, I wouldn't want to have less actions than what, uh, you know, is the standard array for other things. If for no other reason, because I don't want my enemies having that leg up. It's just weird because that, that's not a knob that's that you like. So you basically your stats all start at three. So that's like a knob you wouldn't want to ever turn down to turn anything else up, which is interesting as a game design mechanic. Uh, well, for that, they don't all start at three because none of, first off, none of them start at three. You have you can assign a minimum of one to any of them. Uh, and second, you can um, put your um, you, you can uh, put the lower scores on any of the other ones, but your speed you just have that specific consequence. That is definitely built into the game design. Right. I'm just saying it's an interesting game design choice. Yeah. Well, and I mean the thing because I've I've read the rules and and looked at them and stuff um, a while back when when we started talking about it, Kevin. And to me, it's difficult to kind of figure out. Like in in the character creation, for one, what's a good baseline? Yeah, 
essence number. That's the first thing. But the, th the second thing is, as it pertains to skills, you know, if you stop and think about it, mechanically, <laughs> at least, it's better to take one skill multiple times yeah. than to have three different skills in one essence. Because three different skills is just a, D a D2. A D2, yeah, which but can't credit... One, right, but one skill that's taken three times is a two, four, and six. Yep, which definitely so, fits and with the whole like specialty thing in um, and everyone having their kind of role on a team that definitely fits with the, the G.I. Joe... Uh, yeah. Aesthetic, so and that's actually a helpful way. Maybe right. we should start talking through where you guys were thinking of putting your points for that, so we can have that specialty across the team. Yeah, and where is is that under speed? We were talking. Well, so far, all I've filled in is speed three. <laughs> yeah. uh, I know we were talking earlier about um, vehicles and stuff like that. Uh, that, um, and it's all in one driving. Skill. Driving's under yep, driving. speed. Yeah. Unless you're riding an animal, that's something separate. But yeah, it's animal handling. I was gonna go real heavy on speed. Okay. okay. Yeah. So what's real heavy to you out of twelve points? Five. five? Yeah. Okay. See, I'm I'm nervous about putting five in my start, and you know, I because you know you kind of I do the math. I mean, that's just how my brain works. So you know, put a base two in everything. That that to me is the the simplest. And so now that's eight. So you got four more points. You'll and also so, gain points uh, in these from your care from your different uh, classes as well, right? Um, and I yeah. think your you don't get them from your origins. Or not? Yeah, sorry, you, do. you do get from your origins. You don't from the uh, influences. Yeah, you don't from influences. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, from your oh, okay. origin. So these yeah. will change over the course of character creation. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this yeah. is not what you're gonna be stuck with. Yeah. So also, I, as you gain levels, made... you also gain more. Like that's how your character develops. Is you gain, uh, you'll gain extra points. Each of the different classes gains it in different ways. Uh, like we gain different uh, stats. Like, for instance, the ranger at level one gets a speed essence boost and a smarts essence boost. And then there are certain they're restricted by what skills that can go towards, but the overall essence goes up by one. Whereas commando. The very best one goes up by uh, speed by one, social by one, and I, I, I don't say that because uh, Commando has, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I think to fit my character and his sort of life before military, I'm going to go with strength of one, speed of three, smarts and social both at four. Because I think being really smart and being really sociable is how you get into a role in his career like he's had as far as being uh, a genius in one area of music and also meeting these famous people and keeping up with them sort of to, to fit into that industry. I think a social of four makes sense. Okay. And uh, Mayhem, where'd you uh, land on for your other... Uh... You know, I'm debating, you know, right now what I've basically got is strength of three, speed of three, smarts of four, and social of two. Because I'm just terrified of making something one. But the more I think about it, I might make it social one. Mm -hmm. You know, that that might kind of... I will say, it isn't in the rules as written, but, like, I think that as we play, if we find that, they're like, a character's been built that is just not working properly, we can absolutely retool it. Yeah. So no one yeah. needs to worry about being locked in for whatever. We're not, you know... <laughs> this isn't right. 19, uh, 1985 uh, D&D. <laughs> like, fine, yeah. you're stuck with that. <laughs> no, you made yeah. your con minus two. You have one yeah. hit point. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Zero exactly. charisma. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I was thinking, you know, the smarts, he, because I've looked, like I said, I've looked through the character creation and kind of got an idea of the path. And I know one of his biggest things is the explosives, which is under technology, which is a smarts. Uh, skill mm -hmm. and kind of the path he's going on he doesn't really get any other real increases in that mm. so it makes sense on the front end and when i can assign the points wherever yep to make sure his smarts is high enough to get a good explosives um skill yeah makes uh, sense but, and then of course he's he is combat you know so i want to make sure he's got a good strength and speed as well but social is really not that important so i'm thinking i might lower that okay. uh, to one do it 
Uh, maybe let's do this. So once you guys have your uh, essences assigned, just put them in chat, and then we know you're, uh, sure. you're done. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's probably a good, rather than me continually checking in. Sure. Not that I don't mind doing that, but... Uh, I mentioned to the guys last night, I moved our, we, I got a new comforter for us uh, for the bed and a new comforter uh, cover. I put the old one in here just to see if Anna would uh, like sitting in it. And fuck, she slept all last night, the entire session on it. She's once again, <laughs> dead asleep on the old comforter. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. okay, yeah, I think this works then. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, okay. I have to do math in my head. <laughs> Yeah, 12 goes uh, pretty quick. Yeah, it does. It really yeah. does. Yeah. Okay. All right. The next thing, guys, is you are going to be selecting uh, one or more influences. Uh, you must select one influence, uh, but you can select up to three. Each one that you select beyond the first, each of them gives you a little, um, a small benefit. Um, and then there's also a bond that we're going to, and, an, uh, and another related thing, uh, Oh, not all of them. Some of them are going to have bonds. Some of them are going to have some other tables to roll on to kind of give some backstory uh, to the characters. But you can take up to three. Um, each one that you take beyond your first will also give you a hang-up that will have some kind of complication. Uh, I like this part of the game because it's, it's neat seeing um, how you can mix and match one of the things I used to love about the old Iron Kingdoms role-playing game was that one of the things you did as, in part, as part of character creation is you picked two professions. So the character had two professions, and a lot of the, the flavor of the character came from some of the more unusual pairings where you're like, so I'm a trencher, but I'm also a thief. So how did that, like, how did that come together in this character? Influence feels the same way, where you can have some really neat, like, okay, so I'm a, you know, um, a celebrity uh, martial artist athlete. Um, so basically I'm G.I. Joe, Jean-Claude Van Damme, um, or, or Green, you know, Bruce Lee, I guess for that matter. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, have you guys, I guess, first off, uh, are you guys thinking of taking more than one, uh, influence? I yeah. for sure. I am. Yeah. I, I've thought about it and I've looked at some stuff and I've kind of thought, yeah, maybe taking, I think you can take what, three? Up to three. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I've got an idea of, of the three nice, I okay. look at. So the influences in the game, uh, just for those listening at home, are uh, adventurer, artisan, uh, athlete, checkered past, gearhead, green shirt, martial artist, nomad, small town roots, professional, specialist, and thrill seeker. And I will say, if you have the first printing of the game, I believe it's the art, the athlete one. There's a misprint in it, so you can find it's a it's fixed in the errata. But the table that is in there for the athlete bonds is an accidental reprint of one of the checkered past ones. So if it makes it seem like <laughs> your character is a, if you read it in the core rule book and it sounds like you are a very very sketchy member of the NFL, uh, it that is not intended. <laughs> you should go find the errata, and it's got the a reprint of what the page should be. So, um, do, have you guys selected your influences? Yeah, I think I've got mine. My my number one main is Checkered Past. Nice. I mean, that's really that's really kind of what made him, you know, kind of where he where he came from. Yeah. Um, and then I was looking at the other ones, and I Gearhead seems to make sense. Yeah. And the other one, I. think think and i'm still not 100 sure but i think mm. i'm looking possibly at artisan because i'm thinking maybe you know he's not just into heavy metal maybe he plays a little music yeah 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 so i'm thinking that might be and with the gearhead i'm thinking he might be like a like a keyboard synthesizer type guy love it <laughs> I love it. I saw the uh, video yesterday. I, 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 I thought I sent it to you, Will, and then I fucking got distracted by work stuff. Uh, it was the first live performance by uh, Kraftwerk in 1970. Oh. Is it, is it the black and white one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've seen that. <laughs> it's great. Uh, yeah, the it audience is. in it, the, the audience reaction in it to the first time an audience hearing like full on electronic music is great because there's a couple of members of the crowd who are full on into it, and there's others who are just what? like, what is this? What the hell's going on, yeah. right? <laughs> well, I guess it was a German cry, so it'd be voice das. Yes. <laughs> or was ist das? Was ist das? Uh, okay, so that's uh, that's Mayhem. Uh, what about uh, Switchback or uh, Stage Show? 
What are you guys thinking? Definitely adventurer would be one for him. Yeah. Um, thinking, and then I'm thinking of um, his other one being specialist. Mm, okay. Um, and that maybe he he's like a pilot of some type. Um, he's you know at least adept with flying some vehicles. Um, to what extent I don't know, but you know something along those lines. Yeah. And uh, that's that's those are his two. Oh man, climbing up a mountain and then wingsuiting down. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, what about uh, state show? So <clears throat> I'm thinking uh, that he's a specialist because he's a uh, trained in this, you know, sound engineering. Yep. Um, I like the idea. Well, he's probably a gearhead too, because I mean that is all done with technology and, um, you know. That kind of stuff. And then the last one that I thought would be, <clears throat> excuse me, interesting is Nomad. Because if you're traveling with all of these stage shows and artists, yeah, he's just never really had a home base since he, you know, maybe 17 left home and got into, you know, being a roadie for someone where yeah. he started or whatever. He and also like, could be second generation uh, yeah. musician, oh, right? totally. Right, yeah. like he, he could have been growing up around Born on the road. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. Maybe your parent was a, a musician of some kind. Oh, I like that, yeah. Uh, okay, so why don't you do this thing, guys? So um, the one of them you get without the hang-up, and then the other two ones you do. So let's just say whatever one is the one that does not have the hang-up, put that in as your primary. Uh, so put like, you know, whatever the thing is, prime, and then put the other ones, and maybe if you can put that in chat as well so we know which tables we're going to. Um, whatever one is your prime, uh, put that first maybe, and then the other ones afterwards, and then we'll go through them one by one. So do we do we have to do them in the order we imagine that our character picked them up, or do we no. just do them? No, you're okay. completely free to pick and choose which one is your, which ones have your, the hangups that you have from them are the ones you choose. And there's okay. no other extra benefit from it. You get the uh, influence perk from all of them. You'll get the kind of fun backstory stuff from each of them. Um, you, the only thing is, is that every influence you get past the first one gives you one hang up and you can choose which of those it is. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm gonna make them a specialist. As your primary. Once you guys yeah. have it in uh, chat, then we'll start going through the tables. And let me pull up the uh, errata as well. <clears throat> Should we put this under origin? <laughs> uh, Gnome Toe in the chat says, is there an international version for Action Force, <laughs> which is the British version of this? <laughs> uh, so I put it... I was going to say, Jeff, I put mine down there in the perks because you get a perk with them. Um, okay. I just put them down there, so I wrote like checkered past and then i put like the edge that he gets from it does that does that make sense okay i see yeah okay that was just the easiest way for me to do it okay adventurer and specialist okay checkered okay great all right so jamie you're the first one to have it in there let's uh let's roll some uh fun stuff here now the one that we need to it, no one's an athlete right Great, so we don't need to worry about errata. Um, adventure, uh, Jamie, would you give us a D12 roll? And you can take or leave this stuff, but I think it's fun to start with the random roll for a bond first, and then we can decide, or you can decide. Sure. sure. 10. I'm generous with my resources. I'd happily give the shirt off my back or my last rations to others who need them more than I do. Uh, does that sound like a fit for switchback? Yeah, I think so. I think he... He, he definitely is uh, part of the team. You know, he wants to help the team succeed. Love it. Uh, and the influence perk, you're passionate about exploring new places, environments, and cultures, and have a deep wealth of stories to draw from. Once per scene, when you draw upon your experiences with a short story of your adventures, you gain an edge on a smarts or social test. And for those listening at home, edge is, you, if you, anytime you hear edge or hang up, um, edge is a uh, advantage, rolling 2d20, taking the best. Hang up is uh, roll 2d20, take the worst of the two. Um, then next one is Specialist. Uh, once again, would you give us a D12 roll? The unloved D12 gets a lot of love in these tables. Yeah, it does. Uh, six. 
I frequently forget to eat, sleep, or care for myself when I'm in the middle of research or a challenging problem. Is that something a fit for switchback too? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Uh, so then, and then the specialist perk is uh, when you choose this influence, select a skill in which you have a specialization. Once per encounter, when using that skill outside of combat, you gain an edge. Nice. And your hang up is uh, which one did you get your hang up from? Oh, Wanderlust. Nice. Um, you have a bad case of wanderlust and staying fine staying in a place for long, incredibly boring. You suffer a snag. Oh, it's not hang up, it's a snag. Uh, snag is what a disadvantage is. Snag on social and smart skills when you've been in the same place for more than a few days. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I like that. I like that. That's, that's pretty neat. Okay. Uh, then, 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 then. Next up is Mayhem. We've got yours in there. So why don't we start oh, with yeah, Checkered Pass. Would you give us a D12 roll, please? Maybe. And again, Come you on, take man. or leave what comes up from here. 12. Ooh. You picked up a vice when you were a criminal that you haven't been able to shake. Huh. Does that fit? Yeah. With he, the... he, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, that, 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 that can work. He totally, he smokes. Nice. Totally. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it, he's a, a, a funny story. I One time I went, back when I was in the military, and I went uh, free climbing, doing rock climbing, they, they had a thing just like a recreational thing and one of the guys that was teaching us he said because um, when you free climb you wear these rubber slipper type things on your feet mm. to try and help give you traction and whatnot and he was talking about this guy who was like this master climber he knew and he would free climb in cowboy boots while smoking a cigarette <laughs> and i'm like yeah, okay. Is that man? Him? That, you know, I'm thinking this guy, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. All Let's right, so see. the perk you get from Checkered Past is you tend to think outside uh, the box compared to traditional Joe thinking, and you gain an edge on smart skill tests when you're looking for weakness, flaws in security, or hidden items. Yeah. Nice. Uh, your next influence is uh, Gearhead. Give us a D12 12. roll, please. 12 there. 12 again. Holy crap. I draw blueprints and jot down ideas on anything handy from a cocktail napkin to a hotel notepad and often leave those partial designs lying out where anyone could get them. Um, yeah, yeah, I could definitely see that. He's, <laughs> he's you know, he's, he's like, he's thinking to himself, okay, if I wanted to cut through this, I would do that. Or if I wanted to really make something really explode in a certain way, I would do it like this. Yeah. <laughs> I can already see you guys, yeah. you know, uh, planning at a bar to, for some kind of, you know, covert mm -hmm. thing, leaving the bar, and then the cocktail, the waitress comes over and finds, like, plans for blowing up the building. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so your influence perk you get from this is that you're at home with software and hardware of, at the, the uh, software and hardware of machines, and quickly find footing uh, with others devoted to how stuff works. You gain an edge on social skill tests when talking about technology with others or when helping others work on them. Uh, the hang up, however, is you're fascinated with new technology and when faced with it, uh, you find it difficult to focus on anything else until you understand how it works. When dealing with new technology, you suffer a snag on all roles until you gain at least a basic understanding of how it works, usually a turn or more. Uh, fortunately, you're not fighting a foe that has some kind of bizarre new technology in every, you know, no. new episode of the uh, thing. That's really cool. <laughs> um, then uh, your final one is uh, Artisan. So would you give us once again a D12 roll? Six. I suspect one of my patrons, uh, one of the patrons of my art is a member of Cobra. I don't know if that... Just someone you know yes, in the in the metal yeah, scene who is uh, you know someone who's steel viper. Yeah. Let's see. Doesn't mean they are necessarily. It just says suspect. Yeah. If that doesn't fit, I you can give probably. us. A, you can roll again. See if there's something else that, that fits better. Let me let me do one more roll, Kevin. Sure. Just to see if I get anything else. Three. I regularly recite stories, speeches, and monologues to inspire my comrades. Oh, hell no. That's too hard. 
kind of have to. What, what I imagine the, the is in that, that hell no. Here's the thing: <laughs> I, the way I would think of that in your character's things is if there are lines from like Megadeth songs or Iron Maiden songs or things like that that you want to quote, <laughs> fill your fucking boots. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I could see him busting out Sabaton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then uh, your influence perk is you are passionate about your art style and gain an edge on social and smarts skill tests when your art style applies. And the hang up is you sometimes get absorbed by your work and miss what's going on around you. You suffer a snag on smarts and social skill tests unrelated to your art while you are actively involved in your art. <laughs> That's going to be great. Uh, hey, yep. oh, ma'am, ma'am, we, we need to be leaving right now. Keep an eye out for the Cobras. Like, no, ma'am, with this fucking cover band. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and we don't need to roll for your art style because you already uh, you have told yeah. us what that uh, what that is. So that's great. All right, then finally, we've got uh, Jeff Rain. Would you give us a D12 roll, please? Yep. Uh... Let's see our specialist. Here we go. An 11. Uh, so that is, I seek out people to mentor. G.I. Joe is a dangerous lifestyle, and I don't want my skills to go with me if a mission goes sideways. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah? He could definitely be seeing Mayhem as a potential person to mentor in the ways of... Nice. Uh, so the influence perk you get is, we talked about this before, once in a, per encounter, uh, when you use that skill outside of combat, you gain an edge. So pick one of your skills and you will gain that. Uh, then, uh, oh, and you, did you guys assign your skill points from your, um, what do you call it? From your essences? essences? Uh, yeah, I hadn't gotten through that part yet. Oh, it's okay. Just, we'll go uh, back and we'll do that as soon as yeah. we finish up with this. Uh, yeah. So then next is Gearhead. Uh, give us a D12 roll again there, Jeffrey. Yeah, sorry, I'm just scrolling so I can cut, cut and paste the yeah. information nice. that rolls Two. up. Machines are integral all over the world, and I want to improve them to make life better for all. Uh, I don't really see him doing that. He's really only into very specific machines that, like, make sound and lights and... So I don't know. Maybe. But I mean, is that, I guess. Are there ways you can think of that? Uh, that yeah, I guess I could. Because like maybe it's it, what he thinks is like music is integral to the world, and so it's like if he gets into someone's jeep and the stereo's not working, it's like, well, this isn't gonna do, you know, like or whatever, right? Like, yeah, he could be upgrading that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see him like messing with people's microwaves and whatnot. No, but... no, no. It, I, like it, just like we did with the heavy metal. I think you, if you think of it in the lens that you're you're thinking of uh, yeah. for the character, that would be. But yeah, like you know, someone coming home and you know because you guys are staying in a safe house, it's now got this outstanding home uh, you know entertainment system or sound system. Yeah, exactly. All right, so okay, uh, sure. your influence perk, uh, we, we talked about this one before as well. You gain an edge on social skill tests when talking about technology with others or when helping others work on them. Uh, so actually, you may be a good pairing with uh, Mayhem then too. If you're assisting him with any stuff, uh, you get uh, an edge on that. And your hang-up, though, is you're fascinated with new technology. Same thing as before. You suffer a snag in all roles until you gain at least a basic understanding of how it works. Yeah. This would be great with the two of you together. Switch back. You're gonna oh, have, yeah. Wait. Yeah, here no, it's doing this. Yeah, yeah. Like we're Cut just discussing guys, it every guys. time. <laughs> yeah, switch back. It's going to be annoyed. Uh, and your <laughs> final one is Nomad, which we have not seen yet. Uh, would you give us a D20 roll, please? Oh, oh actually, that's if I want to pick some cities I've yeah, lived in. Yeah, 3D20, actually. I guess I could do that. I already rolled the 9 on the other thing. Oh, so the so 9 is I pick up on local accents very quickly. Oh. oh, yeah, I like that. If he's okay. lived all over the place, that's kind of yeah. interesting. And then give us a 3d6 uh, roll, please. And what we can say, these are probably places that most uh, prominently stand out for you. Maybe, like, your parents recorded an album there or, you know, you spent some time there with, uh, you know, producing music. So 3d20. Uh, three. Hey, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, Jacksonville, Florida, and Columbus, Ohio. So that's uh, 
east coast, south, southern United States, and kind of central. Yeah, I've been to all three of those places. Oh, nice. <laughs> I lived in Jacksonville, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, was it when you were in the military? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. where uh, that's where my base was, was in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm. What do you think, Jeff? Does that sound... Uh... Yeah, it, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, like, he could have lived many places. Maybe these are just places, like, where he, like, attended school or... Yeah, and I think it, it, um, it also... Uh, these are ones that probably stand out more than, than others. There's something that happened there that you did there. Yeah. Uh, so your influence perk from this, you have a strong ability to read people and their motivations, and uh, due to how fast you have needed to make f new friendships, you're a good judge of character. You gain an edge on social skill tests when attempting to gain insight into someone's motives or see if they're lying to you. Additionally, you have an edge on any culture skill tests about cities that you've lived in. So I will. I can tell you that I'm going to be having to do some research on Louisville, Jacksonville, and... Uh, Columbus, because that's where clearly your adventures are going to have to go. Um, Cobra is trying to ruin college football. Oh, no. Oh, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a, uh, what do you call it, NCAA uh, joke to be made there. Or, I know it's basketball, but <laughs> collegiate sports of Cobra saying, like, look, man, like we're evil, but uh, come on. <laughs> Uh, Hangups, uh, you don't often open up to others because you have learned through the impermanence of your life that's a waste of time. It takes you for a while to trust new people, and you do not believe any stranger on your first encounter with them. You have a snag on social skill tests when dealing with strangers for the first time. Interesting. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, then, let's go back and, just, and talk about the skills as well. I'm just going to find the... I want to make sure that... I could find the reference that tells us how we spend those specific points because here we go. Mm. Ha! So here's what you get, guys. Um, each point you put in that increases the dice size from a D2 to a D4 to a D6 to a D8 to a D10 to a D12. You can also spend a point to specialize in something. And there are under, let's see, it's on page. Uh, I think for the for the first batch, probably the best is just to get some of those dice going before you start specializing. But just remember, you can always spend a skill point to gain a, um, uh, a specialization as well. And what the specialization allows you to do is that's the thing we talked about before we went live about how uh, you're not only rolling your dice, uh, you're rolling every dice smaller than that as well when you're making the test, and then you're taking the best of, of all of them. So, like, for instance... Um, uh, might is a skill under uh, strength. If you had a might of say D6 or D, let's say D8, uh, and you have the specialist martial arts, well then anytime you're utilizing fighting moves that resolve around direct application of speed or strength, you'd get to roll a D8, a D6, a D4, a D2, take the best of those and use that to, as uh, the thing you add to your D20. So there's good reasons for specializing. Uh, just you, uh, uh, you need to have a, at least a skill of D, uh, D4 in order to do that. It's kind of like Savage Worlds. He uses the, the uh, dice size as a measure of how skilled you are. So every point you've got in your essences at this point gives you one point in skills. So feel free to select your skills from them. Where's this list here? Skill list is on, uh, there's not, uh, let's see here. Do you mean the skill list or the specializations? Well, like, are we putting the skill? Oh, Sk the, the skills? skills? Yeah, what I suggest is that on the, because there's not a character sheet, just put them in, like, put a bracket and then just put your skills listed after uh, whatever the related essence is. So, like, for instance, okay. if you decide to take a point in, uh, for you, um, technology under smarts, just next to your smarts, put a bracket and put smart, you know, uh, technology. And then if you say want to buy it up to a D8, that would cost you four. I guess, because at D2, D, uh, D2, D4, D6, D8. Um, you're going to get other skill points as you go along uh, in character creation. Just This is you assigning them to start with with what your base levels are. Again, I don't think you worry about spending points in specialization at this stage. They don't actually mention specialization until one of the later stages of character creation. So I think the game sort of suggests to first start with just getting some baseline skills. 
Does that all make sense, guys? For how you're spending mm -hmm. your skill points? <laughs> not right, quite Jamie. Every... <laughs> Jamie's got the face of like, ah, I'm not quite uh, buying what you're selling here. <laughs> for every essence, you get a skill right now. Yeah. Oh, so you're muted, Jamie. Uh, for every essence, yes. For every point in essence, you get one skill point. That skill point can then be spent to gain, to raise, a, to either purchase a D2 in a skill or raise it up from one uh, one step up the skill ladder. Right now, your skills are at zero. So let's say, um, well, how many points, uh, Mayhem, how many points do you have in strength? Your essence strength. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, what? What? How many points do you have in uh, uh, in essence? Or your how many points in the essence for strength? Four. Four points. Okay, sorry. So what he could do, for instance, is put say uh, two skill points into athletics, which would give him a D four in athletics. He could put one into brawn to give him a D two in brawn, and then one into might or one into conditioning to give him plus one. That would be one way of spending those points. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, so each of your skills, you can do that exact same thing. You take whatever okay. your essence is and then spend an equal amount. Uh, and then every time one of your essences goes up, you also get to raise one of your corresponding skills. At later stages, you may be restricted in how you spend those, but right now you're absolutely wild and free to uh, pick whatever skills you like. And conditioning is hit points. So if I only have one... If I only have one strength, I might want to spend it on conditioning just to have a little bit of... A little bit. Actually, you're going to get a base level of health in this uh, as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's not... Uh, it, it's, uh, it depends on how you see your character. If we're at this stage... <laughs> stage, but I'm pumped. Uh, if at this stage, stage show does not... Uh, you know, you're seeing him more like he's helped the Joes out yet, but he's not really part of the team, which is where this first adventure starts. Um, yeah. You're only first level. You can choose and spend that somewhere else. And then as you gain levels, when you get a, a point in might, you can put that towards conditioning. Right. That's one of the neat things about the game is that even though your skills and everything else goes up, um, unless you're raising your conditioning, your hit points aren't going up. Right. I just see like might is like kind of like fighting a little bit in like getting into a brawl. Brawn, I guess I could put it in brawn or maybe just athletics. No, if conditioning makes sense for you, that's on intimidation is also... I just imagine, like, conditioning, a lot of that is just, like, normal exercise. Like, you know, running on a treadmill or... I, I guess I don't see him doing that. Yeah. I'm going to just give him some athletics. What about intimidation? That's like being physically intimidating, right? Uh, yeah. The, the specializations under their distract, frighten, taunt. Has he ever had to use his size to try and deal with a, um, you know, a problematic roadie or a uncooperative band member or a, a, right. in his more junior days, maybe like a club owner who decides that they're not going to pay what they said they were going to pay? Which one would most simulate... Helping set up equipment. Uh, probably Braun. brawn. Brawn? Okay. I'm going to go with brawn just for, I mean, they all have uses and like they're, I'm, I'm basically setting one to a D2. So. Yeah. Okay. So what do you think? Put brackets behind strength uh, and then the dice. So like uh, then D2. Bra well, no, no, the, the skill name. Otherwise you won't know what the skill is. <laughs> the So put bracket, brawn, D2, and then. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Bracket, I, I didn't Braun, hear you say D2. that there was a skill. I heard this. Uh, yeah, the way that Mayhem set it up, that's perfect. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and you're yeah. specializing in explosives. I, I did decide to because that's it, that's really his focus. For you sure. Know, it's not necessarily technology in general. Oh, I'm getting the can roll 20 scroll bug where I can't see what he's typed. Oh. Oh. Uh, you can hit... Um, no, I'm just typing something. Oh, okay. To make it yeah. If you uh, if you want to refresh the browser, uh, that often uh, fixes it. Well, I did refresh right before we started. I could do it again. Maybe it'll, You're it'll disconnect me. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, I only have one strength skill, so that one was easy. Okay. Speed. Yeah. And then maybe if you could do uh, once you guys have it entered in, just put uh, uh, put your updated uh, stats in uh, chat. 
just the the um, your essences and your skills. So you can see how everyone because also this will help you guys figure what places you want to specialize. So you can get your your own thematic space. I really like the way that influence um, makes the uh, you know the backstory for the characters and and the personality. That's a very cool uh, part of the character creation. Okay. Are you guys finding it easy to select where these things are going, or is it? Uh, I just haven't read suffering? these ones, so I'm just having to kind of glance through them. Ah, oh, sure. Oh, I know. Really, wasn't commenting on how long it was taking. More just whether it's an interesting. It seems like it'd be an interesting process because you got fairly limited. <laughs> It is interesting. It, mm. It's very, yeah, it starts to fill in and connect the origin and the influences. So mm. it's it's neat. Like for me, it's it's picking itself. Um, uh, some of these are really based on the story or the character concept, I meant. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. I'm almost done here. I like as well the... Um incentive of uh taking more influences to take uh the corresponding hang-ups mm -hmm. that's a great mechanic as well because you're not if you don't want to play a character who's got any disadvantages any mechanical penalties you can just play that character with one influence if you do like embracing that stuff then there's i think those uh, all the ones we read at least gave a really fun like mechanical flavor to things that are personality about that feel like what you'd see in a gi joe cartoon or a gi joe comic Right, each of those characters define themselves by often those like side. I, I can't remember. It was it Roadblock who made the pork chop sandwiches. I think so. I think that sounds right. Yeah. yeah. Or was he the chili that cook? Right. In any event, there's like, the, one of the characters. Yeah, like, gung ho. One of those guys. Yeah. I think. <laughs> so when you take something that has a specialization, you add the specialization. No, every skill has a specialization. Remember this, if you're choosing to pick a specialization that costs you one skill point, oh, then okay. what you do is when you're making a skill roll, like we can see Mayhem has got technology of D6 uh, and he's got a specialty in explosives. When he makes an explosives roll, he gets to roll a D6, a D4 and a D2, take the best of those and use that as his skill dice in addition to whatever he rolls in his D20. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So I see. So it costs one point to get the D two, and then every point after, at this stage uh, again. Right, again, he spent three points to get technology to D six, and then one point to make it explosives. Yeah, and the way okay. that the um, uh, again, like the game doesn't even bring up specialization until two more stages later. So I, I think that like a you one way to to think of it is that the reason they're not bringing it up is because they're they expect you to spend just the, the dice on everything but we'll point out that he's not going to gain access to those skills at a later stage so he kind of needs to spend it at this stage okay great you guys are fast it looks almost like a combo of um uh savage worlds and uh weg star wars uh in the, the listing of it, where it's like the skill mm -hmm. and the, the stat and yep. the skills go underneath it. But with the D stuff, because um, I'm doing that daily write up of um, Savage Worlds uh, superhero stuff. Like I, I'm seeing the D, D whatever a lot on a daily basis. Okay. Okay. So I've been kind of using the fillable sheet off on the side just to help visualize where things go. Yeah. It's helped me. Yes, and uh, Jamie posted in Discord as well, uh, so you can uh, if you guys want to snag that uh, as well. It's, it's posted under the um, knowing is half the battle. I can't whatever, whatever the Discord server, the Discord uh, channel is that I set up for, for this game. Yeah. Okay. So I'll get myself ready for your next stage. God, we're already at the halfway session. Wow. Well, let me do the easy one. That's easy. I keep saying class. It's actually class is not a word that's used in your yeah, no. role. It's just a word that is part of the language. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's, it's got levels. So if it's got levels, it's class. But what do they call it? Is it like your focus or your... So your origin, oh, yeah, your influence is... I don't know what... If there's a cognate in... Uh, influence might be... 
backgrounds and uh, but that's sort of what your origin is your origin is sort of your uh, background like the fills the world that background does in like pf2 or to a degree in in um fifth edition your role definitely fills the the role uh that um what do you call it that um classes do in uh, other kind of or other class-based uh, games influences are sort of a unique thing in this which is neat the influences are almost a, like in, again in um there's not a race component to it in this or an ancestry component uh but the influence sort of feels like it fits the role of uh backgrounds do in some other games just not mechanically the way that it does in this it's a neat thing it's a really really clever thing especially for a licensed game it's a smart way of making it easy to be like i want to play a character as a combo of x and y you know and you can find that in the influences to help guide what you're going to be building okay oh nice go stage show is together uh, I so, think I've got mine. Awesome. I figured initiative. Like, I mean, if you're trying to respond to getting the lights and the sound ahead of the band all the time, you got to be on top of your game. <laughs> Absolutely. True. All right. So we got our heroes together. I love that Mayhem's performance is only a D2. <laughs> Yeah, the guy who uh, it's a, like is an enthusiastic player, but his enthusiasm uh, outstrips <laughs> his ability. That's that right, Will? Yep. <laughs> yep. He's he's just uh, he he's no um, he's no Rick Wakeman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then, uh, you know what, guys? We're at our mid mid. We're a little bit past our mid session break right now. Why don't we take a, a quick uh, five minute break right now? Uh, then we'll come back and get your origin and your role selected. Okay. Nice. Okay. So then we'll be back for those listening at home, and we'll be back after this commercial break. <laughs> <laughs>
You know, the most difficult thing that about this so far has been deciding who your favorite character is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, I mean, the whole Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes, you know, like everybody's got to pick a side there. Everybody's oh, got to yeah. pick a side there. And then I thought you made a great point, Jeff, that someone always got stuck playing Cobra. Mm -hmm. And so there's kind of like, you almost have a favorite Cobra and a favorite Joe, you know, because you end up going back and forth. So it's cool. Yeah, I'd forgotten about the original Destro. I really, that was a great figure. Oh yeah, it was an awesome figure. And that, that, that uh, backpack or case or whatever he had that had like all the different weapon things in it. and Yeah, he was he a like real a, badass. Yeah. He had a cape, I think. He had a cape on and yeah. Yeah, Destro was. was very cool. Well, it was it was cool because like, you know, when you when you realized Cobra, <clears throat> Cobra Commander had a boss, you know, you're like, oh, that's that's serious. <laughs> yeah, and his yeah, I was looking at the images of it. His outfit, like where his <clears throat> his like collar of his shirt is the Cobra hood. Yeah. Like, that's cool. <laughs> okay. All right, so then, guys, uh, next thing we need to select is the origin for our heroes, for our Joes. Um, <laughs> that was <one's> easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's uh, the easiest part of the whole thing in my mind. <laughs> so origin starts on page 56 of the uh, core rule book, and it goes to page 67. Well, since you seem to have had such an easy time of it, what what did you pick for your origin? Oh, this origin's easy. It's navy. Navy, nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's real easy. Okay. Um, I will say so. One of the funny bits, and I only say it's funny because I've never served in the military and I don't come from a military family, uh, and I'm not American for it, but. It is kind of funny that the Marine Corps gets a little bit of a shafting in this, or they're like, "I ah, just play a soldier." Uh, and from what I remember. What I've seen online, there's a lot of like, what the fuck did you just say from either Marine Corps people or from Marine Corps vets uh, or from Marine Corps family things of like a fucking Marine is not a soldier, man. Well, I mean, you know, and some of it, I mean, even on my end, you know, you kind of get to the thing where you talk about like, you know, aviation, you know, which, you know, in my opinion, there's, you know, Navy pilots are the best and saying, you know, go look at the Air Force. I'm like, what? Air Force pilots suck, man. They're cute. <laughs> <laughs> Naval aviation's where it's at, baby. We we land on football fields. <laughs> Floating football fields. Floating yeah. football fields, yeah. Yep. Oh man, that's funny. Um, so, yeah. so that that is just something I thought was really funny because the that was one when this when the game came out, I, I do remember that was one of the like Moments on a hubbub I, on Twitter. Yeah, I looked. I looked. Did a second look because I was wondering that. I was like, all the other branches kind of seem like they fit in, but yeah. <laughs> I guess they didn't want to brown themselves too much in any one thing. Um, as far as this is a little more universal, I guess you can say. But. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I don't. I honestly don't know if um, any other country uh, has that kind of division where like something that was because the marine corps was part of the, the uh, navy at one point wasn't it and then kind of became... no it still is oh it still is okay so there you go so they only they only recently i'm trying to remember they only recently got a permanent position on the joint chiefs of staff i think oh and i mean okay. by recent i mean within like the past decade or so but yeah, uh, yeah. i always tell people you know i mean they are because they don't have here here you go they don't have medics they use navy medics mm. so they don't even train their people you know in, in that oh, side that's interesting um we transport them um that makes we sense. do all of the, like chaplains they don't have chaplains they use navy chaplains mm. um so yeah so well, yeah it's an aside the, uh but they had um uh, that that lions led by donkeys podcast I mentioned before, like they I've they had a, a one on um, or, or episodes on 
the uh, Spanish-American War, both the invasion of Cuba and then the uh, the invasion of uh, the Philippines. And one of the things they were talking about how like it wasn't treated as a serious military action at first because it was just Marines and the Navy. And then it wasn't mm-hmm. until the Army was brought in that then it was like, okay, now we're actually at war here. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's, And it's also got one on the... Um, uh, the first war with the Barbary pirates too. So it taught like it, the podcast has a really great history of the Marine Corps way back to the original, like, you know what? Fuck those North Africans. <laughs> We're going to go. And... <laughs> but anyway, um, okay. So what, or you you said you're going uh, Navy. Yep. So it's a, either a strength or smarts by one. Okay. And then that kind of dictates which skill increase you have yeah so, and you start with two health i think i will <laughs> hey, ground movement of 30 you also have a swim movement of 30 yeah yeah <laughs> cool let's see i think maybe i'll do smarts and take alertness let me read alertness real okay. quick uh, your origin benefit, you also, uh, your life at sea has made you more steadfast and you gain an edge on athletics tests when uh, losing your balance. Yep. Cool. Uh, and then what about switchback or stage show? Does that have an origin in mind? Uh, covered ops. Covered ops for you? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so covered ops is under the non branch uh, specific origin. So. Covered ops, you get uh, increasing your speed or social, and remember when you get th- when you increase your essence, you also get a, 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 another skill point to spend. But your uh, it's dictated by the origin skill. Uh, so the listing that's on there on page sixty four, you start with one health, but your ground speed is thirty five, and your origin benefit is always in contact. You have a wide network of friends, assets, informants, and sources, and once per scene, you may spend a story point to add a useful ally to the scene or declare that you have have a previously favorable relationship with an NPC. You and the GM um, determine, what, uh, determine uh, who they are and uh, how you know each other, uh, but uh, keep in mind that a favorable NPC may still work for an enemy. I think they okay. lost an opportunity to not call this a JM. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the Joe Master. Uh, and then Stacey Show, what are you thinking? You said, was it in civilian? Well, I think I should go with civilian origin. Okay. So <clears throat> civilian origin, um, your essence, uh, any one essence you get to raise. So any of your essence, and then you get an extra skill point in that essence as well. Yeah. Uh, choose any skill to uh, increase based on your training. You start with a health of one. Uh, your ground movement is 30. And then if you did put, I can't remember if you put any, oh, I got your character right here. Okay, so the Mayhem, um, you don't do uh, dice size and conditioning. You're never gonna roll conditioning. That will just be plus two. So, cause Mayhem, you took uh, two, looks like two points in conditioning. Uh, that's actually recorded as a plus two. So you'll take your two health you get from your origin and you add two more to that, you'll have four health total. Oh. So one conditioning equals two health? Uh, no, no, one conditioning equals one. So if you got, okay. like, for switchback, you got plus one. Okay. Uh, so you would have, you start with one as covert ops, so you have a health of two. So Mayhem is starting with a health of four. Um, stage show will start with a health of one, and uh, switchback starts with a health of two. He's like, I gotta shoot you twice to take you down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then let's see here for the civilian, you're, oh, cool. So well-rounded, you get to choose one general perk that you meet the requ- uh, requirements for. So that's cool. We get to look at the perks. Perks are on, and Jeff, they're just sort of like advantages or feats in fifth edition. Yeah. So it says here to consider how you were known by the military. And I like the idea of like, you know the military has like events for its people or whatever they might have a show yeah. if, it, if it's more time sometimes a band will go play for them you know like a yeah. morale booster uh, the USL, and i like the idea right? i like the idea of them like you know they bring a band in to play this show and 
uh, stage shows there doing the sound setup and then they hire them for another thing and stage shows there again and they're like what you're back it's like oh yeah i work with all these artists you know and it's like he just kept meeting people in the military through like and then doing doing shows what for i them. here's what i'm going to throw in for the joes as uh that you i think that the uh, cobra tried to use some kind of sound-based weapon uh, at uh, one of these USO events, and you were the one who figured out how to get rid of it, or to defeat it, or defuse it, or whatever the fuck. Nice. And then that's the thing that draw that drew you drew your attention to them is like, oh yeah, sound. This is really, you know, right. Sound can be a dangerous weapon. Yeah, and I look yeah. forward to coming up with the snake based pun for the name of your nemesis as well. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the? Perks? Oh, it's already there. It's it's Rattler. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> this game's so easy. <laughs> um, all right, then uh, what you're going to be able to pick, uh, Jeff, instead of the uh, the origin benefit like the others got, if you can go to page w between 129 and 134, those are the general perks, and you get to select one of them, but you need to meet the qualifications. And okay. uh, this is where they have the wonderfully named Kung Fu Grip <laughs> perk. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's up. I love it. So, and if, let me see here. Yeah, the art in here is just fucking great. I'm trying to see if there's anything that uh, might stand out as something that. Uh... Hmm, photographic memory, maybe? What is. Nose for Trouble is kind of interesting. Hmm. Do you have a Streetwise of D6? Oh, no, it's only D4. Uh, which you could switch, though. I mean, you, you could drop your Persuasion down to a D2, make your uh, Streetwise a D6, if you like. Yeah, I'll think about that. Because like I think like if you've been to enough shows, I mean, if you're just a constantly at concerts, you're going to get a nose for trouble. Yep. <laughs> both, and especially if you're running the show. So both for like when things are going wrong in the performance, but also yep. when things are going bad with the crowd. If I might make a, a pitch as well for Acute Sense. You might have really acute hearing. Oh, yeah. That might be good, too. So this is, we mm -hmm. talked about this before, but that when there is a symbol, you'll see on that one, you may, you gain a, a, a increase, the arrow, the ladder, you know, or arrow thing on there, but that means you increase the dice size by one. So, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like it goes up, and then that also counts, that stacks with... Uh, uh, specialization too. So if you happen to be specialized in whatever you're doing too, and it gives you the the boost in the, the skill dice, uh, you get all of those dice from the biggest one all the way down when you roll. Okay, so I kind of have to add a place. Oh, I guess I could put it under my origin. Uh, under perks, uh, this is actually called general perks. So there is oh, a... this is another perk. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, now, uh, Switchback and Mayhem, did you spend your essence? Yeah. And you up, yeah, took, update yeah. your, your yep. uh, origin skill as well? Yep. Okay, pretty good. We got your speed down. Oh, and languages as well, too. Languages play a role. Yeah. I think uh, G.I. Joe is how I learned about the existence of the Esperanto language. Hmm. Someone had it on their data file. <laughs> yep. I, was it Ricondo? I forget. Mm. I tell you what trade I uh, trade paperback I would have fucking loved to have is the uh, Order of Battle uh, ones. I had those. I don't. I might have them still in my comic boxes downstairs somewhere. But the uh, thing that had all the uh, the entries for all the different shows. Yeah. <laughs> including Rocky Balboa. <laughs> And then oh, oh, oh. the next issue, they had a redaction saying he's not actually a joke because they, I guess, they lost the rights or didn't have the rights to it. <laughs> <laughs> Refrigerator Perry was a member of the Joes at one point. Yep, Sergeant Slaughter, all that good stuff. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so I got my origin done. Sergeant Slaughter, you say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, and okay. there's a clever, clever little bit in here where they talk about the um, like characters that were 
uh, product of licenses that have now since expired. They're like, nothing stops you from using them. We can't put them in a book, but nothing can stop you from using them. <laughs> so... <laughs> Okay, so the next stage is our roll. Is uh, has everyone updated their characters for their origin? Spent their uh, updated their essence, spent their their points, got their origin benefit in there. Oh, yeah, I think okay. so. Got your health listed. Got your uh, your movement uh, listed. Let's see, got my movement, my health. So you have with the uh, conditioning, so we should have uh, Mayhem at four health, uh, Stage Show at one, and Switchback at two. And I think your speeds are, Switchback I think is at 30. Uh, Mayhem has a 30 on land, 30 swimming, and Stage Show has, or Stage Show's got 30, and then Switchback, you got 35, don't you? Yeah. That's Covert Ops, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sneaky people move fast. I do. Okay, then if, if you guys, if everyone has selected those things, um, why don't you paste your updated characters in chat for those sites. Don't include the perks and stuff like that, just the uh, stats and yeah. uh, essences and skills. So we can see how everyone's coming together here. Like just this part again. Yeah, perfect. Great, 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 great. All right. Uh, then next stage, cool. So let's take a look at where everyone's sort of leaning their specialties right now. We got uh, Mayhem's uh, definitely focusing on technology and explosives, uh, but he's pretty quick as well. Uh, stage show likewise is pretty quick uh, and also in technology, but has a little more chatty chatty than what, uh, actually substantially more chatty chatty than what Mayhem does in Switchback. Uh, ooh, infiltration that with a shadow specialization. So we're getting some ninja going on here, kinda. Uh, and sh oh shoot, you know the uh, shooting. I should point out is targeting. Targeting is your range attack uh, skill. That's based off of skills, uh, off of uh, speed. So I, I don't think anyone has. Uh, got those yet but let's see what you get out of your roll and we can rejig if need be so the roles that are played this is the closest cognate to uh, classes in other uh, in class-based uh, rpgs your selections are commando which is the absolute very best uh, there is infantry officer ranger renegade technician and vanguard have you guys selected what roles you're going to be playing Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> well, once again, tell us what Van what role is uh, Van uh, Mayhem going to play? Infantry, baby. Infantry, very cool. And then uh, switchback and stage show. What are you guys thinking? Um, commando for switchback. Nice, the very best one. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> and then stage show. Are you thinking technician? Yeah, probably, right? Because, I mean, that's the one that seems to make the most sense. Okay. Or, uh, I mean, officer, I could see as well if it's taken in kind of like an inspirational kind of way. Because the officer is... Yeah, a... that's right. Uh, no, I don't want to take that rule just because, like, I know what you're saying, but it's like... No, the tech stuff seems to be more what you've been describing as, as his uh, his shtick anyway, so... Yeah. Great. All right, so then here's what... Let's go to each of these things in turn. We'll start with the best, which also is the first one <laughs> I turned to. Commando! So, Commando, you are going to gain a uh, speed uh, essence boost by one and a social essence boost by one. And you're also gaining plus one health. Uh, okay. You are qualified with all standard land, sea, and air vehicles. Um, and there is, I'll, I'll, I gotta look it up again, but qualified has a different meaning than proficient. Qualified, I believe, means you can start with it, I think, or either you can requisition it at the start of a mission. I'll, I'll check that for you. You also have Battle Cry. As a brave member of G.I. Joe, you fearlessly charge into battle. In the first round of combat, if your first action is a move action, you may move an additional 10 feet. Uh, you also have... Oh, here we go. So you're, you are trained in light armor and qualified in tactical armor. 
Uh, you are trained in grenades, finesse and silent weapons, and qualified in submachine guns. Uh, you also gain one rank in two skills, one f from... Yeah, so whatever essences you, you gain. So one, uh, one speed essence, one social essence, and they've got to come from that list on page 71. Acrobatics, infiltration, deception, or streetwise. You also I'll gain... Skill. Let's see here. Be a hero. All warfare is deception as a... Uh, when your perks, once per scene, after making a deception or skill, stealth skill test, you may re-roll all of your skill dice and take the new result. Okay. Uh, you also gain, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, oh, your focus choice as well. Oh, you gain your sneak attack, of course. Once per turn, when using a silent weapon to attack a target within 20 feet, and you have edge on the attack or an ally also within 20 feet of the target, you deal additional damage once per turn. Uh, the amount of extra damage at your level is one. So you often will do at least two points of damage, which is usually enough to take out, like, you know, Cobra Troopers or whatnot, or Stage Show in one hit. <laughs> um... Then, then, then you also get to pick your focus. You choose either infiltrator, sniper, or spy. What are you thinking? Definitely infiltrator. Definitely infiltrator. Okay. Uh, infiltrator, you gain shadow as your first your first focus point uh, focus perk. Your speed increases. In, uh, speed essence increases by one, um, and the skill point from that must be invested in infiltration or a specialty for that skill. Those who attempt to detect you while you're infiltrating suffer two negative shifts in their skills. And there are negatives on the ladder as well. Wait. Yeah, like going down to auto, fail, or fumble. So especially against like low-level chumps, that basically means they're just not going to be able to see you. That's pretty badass. Okay. So then I'll let you make your skill check choices. You're going to gain one. Uh, so your speed essence will go up by one, which will go towards either infiltration or a specialty for infiltration. And then you also gain plus one speed, plus one social, and spend that on one of those four skills on page 71. Mayhem, you are an infantry roll. Yep. So let's see here. Uh, so your first perk, be a hero. Uh, you may spend a story point once per combat to re-roll all targeting skill dice on a single attack. You must use the new uh, result. When you use this ability, you may crit on the D2. That's pretty badass. Uh, your training plus one to either... Uh, no, plus one to speed uh, essence, plus one to strength essence. Um, you gain... And then the ranks you gain are either in athletics, conditioning, driving, or targeting... Uh, you are trained in light, medium, and heavy armor, and you're trained in all weapons. Uh, you also gain the Yojo benefit, plus one to your health. So your health's a five right now, I believe. Standard issue equipment qualification, and qualified with all standard land, sea, and air vehicles. And you likewise have the battle cry. So if you call out Yojo, you, and your first action is a move action, you gain an additional ten feet. Uh, you're Selection then is, oh, before we get to your focus, you have your fighting style as well. Um, so you gain one of the following, akimbo, careful, close quarters battle, defense, long shot, or trigger happy. Which of those do you I think? think? I think the close quarters battle. Okay. You do not suffer penalties to ranged attack skill test when within an enemy's reach. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Point blank grenade launcher, here we come. Yeah, basically. I mean, there's nothing like a squat gun to the face to yeah. even the odds. That's awesome. Uh, and then your focus uh, is either artillery, mechanized infantry, or medic. Yeah, he's he's artillery. Artillery, you got it. <laughs> so then the, fir the artillery uh, perk you get is trajectory. Your smart mm -hmm. essence increases by one. Uh, and the skill point from this must be placed in alertness or science. And you may choose which skill you use when throwing explosives between might, finesse, targeting, or science. 
When using a targeted explosive launcher device, your range is increased by 30 feet. Pretty awesome. <laughs> At third level, you get an ability called Bigger Booms. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, which one? Which one did I really like? I'm trying to remember. Dead man, it's with shock and awe. Uh, shape charges seventh level. Okay, when you attack with an explosive, you may reroll the skill dice you use and exclude. Oh, that's pretty cool. Exclude the number of targets in the area. There we Your go. Your explosives deal double damage to objects and structures. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's what I like. I'm just going to be bringing buildings down. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right, so then you got to make those selections for strength, essence, speed, uh, strength, speed, and then that one right. smarts thing. And then for you, Jeffrey, the technician. Technician, you gain... Uh, uh, quick study once per scene you may use a free action to learn the toughness evasion willpower or cleverness of a target you can see so you get to learn the defenses of a target you can see your training you increase your smarts by one and your speed by one uh, and then you can apply those skill ranks to science technology driving or initiative you are trained in light armor and computerized battle dress, and you are qualified in impulse armor. Your weapons, you're trained in ballistic, element, and explosive weapons. Um, you also gain a plus one to your health from that Yojo trait, so you have two health. Now it'll take me two times to shoot you, uh, mm -hmm. to <laughs> take you down. Standard issue equipment qualification and qualified with all standard land, sea, and air vehicles. And you got that battle cry. Um, we'll deal with your focus in a second, but your primary tech, at first level, you choose the type of advanced technology that you employ most frequently. It's either armor, drone, gear, or weapon. I'm on page 102, Jeff. Yeah, I know. I'm just getting, look, reading it. So what do you think? Um. So the w advantages from way you the way you've described your characters, it sounds like it's between gear and weapon. Uh. And weapon is you're qualified in the limited weapon of your choice. And one of the neat things, the, the game has a way of building extremely cool customized weapons. So like uh -huh. your whole sonic weaponry stuff, we can very easily figure out what that's going to look like in, in game mechanics. Yeah, um, that's kind of what I'm imagining. Yeah, qualified in the limited weapon of your choice and can choose a standard weapon upgrade as a free upgrade during equipment assignment and requisition. That's part of each mission you're going to go through a, a equipment requisition uh, stage. Uh, there are roles that you'll make uh, for it as well. C kind of similar to what we do in uh, Rogue Trader uh, with yeah. uh, acquisition. But, uh, like, for instance, for uh, weapons... I don't know about this whole impulse armor and the other things here. I, I haven't seen what those do. I was more keen on the weapons. But, 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 but... I did look, and there is, like, an elemental weapon that uses sound nice. or somewhere under there i did that's why i looked this all i got at least that far before i decided if i would go this road nice and yes they do have sonic weapons okay so. so that would be and i think it's under limited right yeah probably uh let's see here uh yeah elemental jet directed elemental so make sure it's not under restricted. Artillery missile. <laughs> Let's see here. I think it's element, uh, isn't it? Uh, yeah, element jet or element directed element. Uh, like they give like laser rifle, incendiary blaster. The the jet ones are like flamethrower or frost cannon. I think we can reskin that to be sonic. I saw it in there. What page is the weapons on? I'm on page 142. Sure, I saw an example where it said... Let's see here. Where did I see this? 
Yeah, I don't, uh, I, I don't see it. Melissa, what it could be, you may have been looking under the upgrades, which allows you to change things. So, let's see here. Uh, because the you get a free upgrade on it anyway, and there's things like uh, uh, where was rumbling, rumbling like reverberates on impact. Uh, the weapon gains the sonic trait. Uh, the sonic trait is under. Uh, under element, so you, you would pick that a reverberating element that can be uh, subtle or blatant. Sonic weapons gain an additional uh, alternative effect identical to the weapon's primary effect, but it targets willpower. Oh, that's cool! With a, a minus two or uh, two steps down on the ladder. So long and short is that that yes, you can absolutely get that as a limited weapon. So it, is weapon the focus you want to go with? I think so. Yeah. Okay. And uh, then uh, you uh, then your focus. Uh, sorry, that's not your focus. That's your primary tech. Your primary tech is weapon, and, and then your focus is either expert, think tank, or tinkerer. Which of those? So I think that the. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. What are you thinking? Uh, I think the focus I was looking at was think tank. Think tank, okay. Because. It lets me substitute my smarts technology for firing. Oh. Um, That's what the first level thing does. <clears throat> for a think me. tank? Isn't it? Uh, uh, where did I see that? Let's see here. Uh, yeah, yes, brain power. Yeah. Your smart essence increases by one at first level and again at tenth. The skill point from this must be placed in technology. Additionally, one of the following skills, athletic, might, finesse, or targeting, when making skill tests of the chosen skill, including attacks, you can use technology instead. Brilliant. Yeah. So you can tech for your attacks. Perfect. Yeah, because then you can kind of still shoot without having to put the points into uh, yeah. targeting. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, so then you're going to be choosing uh, a one speed essence and one smart essence uh, boost for, let's see here, uh, for the ones, the skills that are listed on, where are they here? Uh, page 102. All right. Uh, so then that, that's what you're deciding right now. I'll sw go all the back to the beginning. Switchback, how are you doing? You made your selections and such? Yeah, I think I think I've got all of his. Um, oh, did you role. post it in there already? No, I didn't. I just uh, okay. Let me p post it in there now. This nice. is the updated one. Okay. So his, if I'm right, his speed becomes eight because I had given five. He got plus one for origin, plus one for roll, and plus one for focus. Uh, yeah. So um, <laughs> so I updated him to. Uh, so he has a specialization now in driving uh, air and shadow. Which, nice. So that's those are the updates for him. Okay, very nice. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and that means his his um, evasion defense is gonna be pretty fucking good. How about Mayhem? How's he coming along? Pretty good. I'm working on getting all the little moving parts in here. I've got my skills picked out. Nice. Think, well. I'm not done with the skills, I don't think, because I think I've got another increase coming. Come on. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Let's double check and see if there's any other stages. All right, cool. So switchback is pretty much ready right now. So what you can do is, let me, let me double check, make sure there's nothing else we're missing from. Yep, okay, that's done with the roll. We're starting level one. So you can calculate your derived benefits now. Uh, your toughness is 10 plus your strength. Evasion is 10 plus your speed. Cleverness is 10 plus your smarts. And willpower is 10 plus your social. Uh, 
and then mayhem whenever you're ready go ahead and post your same kind of stat block thing in there just so we know you're done same thing ditto for uh stage show so i might technology could be a d10 okay. or it could be a d8 with a specialization is that correct that's right yep okay and specializations are like advanced technology, communications, computers, engineering, explosives, or a specific technology such as artificial intelligence, drones, mechanics, or in your case, like sonic tech. Yeah, I was wondering if that's what I should do just to make him like not a complete um, technology expert, but like specialized in yeah audio technology. Well, even um, like if, yeah, like if you do sonic technology as your focus, uh, for it, that means <laughs> just from a fighty fighty perspective, you'd be rolling to attack a d8, d6, d4, d2, uh, and your d20 uh, when you are rolling, and then taking the best of the skill dice when you're making your attacks with your sonic weapons. Yeah, I think that's like more, it, it fits the character more. Okay. To be like d8 technology, focus on sonic instead of. Just D10 technology. Okay. Yeah, because he's not like a, you know, uh, mad engineer or mad scientist. Exactly. Kind of... mm -hmm. okay. okay, so then I think the final stat thing looks like that. Cool. Uh, and if it's not called focus, it's called specialization. Oh, special. The... Yeah. That's specialization. Okay. And the, just double check something here. Yeah, technician, you get the bonus to strength. Oh, mayhem's together too. Health five, love it. Okay, so then it's this. Fixed, there we go, fixed. Okay. Um. Am I missing something? Oh, just my equipment, I think. Uh, yeah, and actually, gear you don't start with. Uh, what? There. Let me double check this. I was, I was. No, but I just mean like a recording, like what gear I'm allowed to use. Oh yes, yeah, got it. Sorry. Uh, I'll just add that here with these two. Th That's a good idea. Yeah, and I think there are. I'm just oh, gonna just read put this them here. Below ah. my. I'll put them in the bottom because oh, so it's under gear. So qualified equipment. Different equipment requires different qualifications. You are assigned gear uh, you were qualified in, such as from your role or general perks. Depending on the equipment, you might need to make a choice, uh, have a limited access to a selection, or need a specific item. For instance, for example, uh, if you have grenade qualification, you have access to a wide variety of grenades, but can only bring a limited number of total grenades on a mission. You can only wear one battle dress, so even if you are qualified in multiple types of armor, you, can, you only have one to choose. Um, as you level up, you'll gain uh, opportunities to customize and create weapon equipments between mission. Uh, this includes customized weaponry, armor, gadgetry that you've purchased or engineered between missions, as well as approved pets. Uh, G.I. Joe is not responsible for any lost or damaged personal equipment taken on the mission. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, and I do love the encumbrance in this. We talked about this before, but the... So the loadout limits for your character um, is you can carry six hands of weapons. So you take whatever your gear is and, like, a, a rifle is two hands worth of, uh, of weapons, a pistol is one... <laughs> A claymore would be two, uh, so that's it. You got six hands worth of weapons you can uh, bring with you, and one set of battle dress. And let's see here. Yeah, and once you're assigned to a mission, you get a standard set of gear, which is fatigues, combat, uh, close combat weapon, uh, sidearm, fire, fire, sidearm, firearm, a rifle, and two grenades, as well as a tactical backpack. And then your qualified equipment, you also get to bring that. So if you happen to be qualified, so switchback will always have access to a submachine gun uh, as well. Um, stage show, I think your special, you, you got some uh, battle dress that you can, you're qualified in that you get to pick from. 
Uh, and then Mayhem, I don't think you... Let's see. Yeah, I don't think you had anything that was uh, especially... Trained in light, medium, heavy armor, all weapons. I think being trained in all weapons is a big deal. Um, qualified in standard issue equipment, all standard land sea air vehicles, yeah. Yeah. Um, I do have one minor change I want to make, Kevin. Yeah, what's up? So, <clears throat> right now my targeting is only a D2. Yeah. And I've got an initiative of D6, yeah. which that was from... Um, that was from the very beginning of assigning everything. Yeah. I'd like to make those both D4. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 It I just understand. makes more sense. For sure. And if as we D2. play, you find like certain perks or certain whatever, like we need to make changes mm -hmm. to these characters. This is our first time playing the game. I have no issues mm -hmm. with uh, making any changes as we go. Right. We kind of have no idea how this stuff's going to play out. So. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It seems like the characters are, because of the targeted um benefits you get from certain essences and whatnot like it seems to be kind of idiot proof where it'll build towards you'll have competent characters that are supposed to do the things you're supposed to do but um never let it be said that players and uh, dms can't uh, or jms uh, can't find a way to make incompetent characters out of the <laughs> competent <laughs> There, there's something to be said, though, about shaping the character based on the concept, you know, that's nice about where we are right now. And then once we get into gameplay and we see how it actually behaves and if it meets that concept or not, it'll be interesting to see, you know, mm -hmm. how much they adjust. But Definitely. You know, I think this is really cool, the way it's coming together. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm liking it. I, so it's, about gear. Yeah. Um, he'd like to have... Like early on, I'm imagining he's got some kind of a sonic rifle or, you know, something like that that he's using that he helped the G.I. Joes invent. But long term, uh, defensively, I'd like to work on like this is kind of a more long term goal, some kind of like sonic defensive armor where he's, you know, almost like a battle suit where he's wearing like fancy headphones or something like noise canceling. And then he's got like the equivalent of like a localized sound grenade. So like if, you know, if Storm Shadow's attacking him, there's no way he can fight him off with a katana. He's just dead. So he would be putting off this like sonic armor to try and protect himself. Mm -hmm. It's obviously like more of a long term thing, but that's no, cool. and it's a that's good, sort of the vision for the character is like that sounds awesome, and it's a it's a good opportunity to talk about how you can like that that personalized gear, the amount of uh, ways that you can customize your character's gear and have them do like have that be the way that they get the special powers or special uh, options in combat is it looks like it's going to be super fucking cool, and it's um it seems to be simple enough that. Uh, it's not going to be, you know, it's not like, and I don't mean it's a criticism of the system, it's the way the system's designed, but like using Hero or using GURPS to try and min-max and build this power and having to do all, it just doesn't have that level of complexity. It's very easy to come up with. I want to have a sonic gun. Can I do that? Yes, I can. I also want to have <laughs> it do, you know, um, I want it to have a... Let's see here. I want to build a, a reinforced grip so I can use might instead of the thing's normal skill. Well, yeah, you can do that too because it's a weapon upgrade. Right. And as you go along, you can further tinker with the uh, things. Well, that's sort of what the think tank is. And I think the idea is like that it is sonic armor that he's using essentially. Yeah. Like so you, he's not like he's not like Tony Stark where he's wearing actual Iron Man suit. He's just wearing like a sonic protection suit. So here's a neat thing. Uh, so uh, we've mentioned the impulse armor, and there was something else that you were qualified in, too, that I don't remember. Uh, battle dress. You were trained in light armor and in computerized battle dress and qualified in impulse armor. I am trained in ballistic element and explosive weapons. Okay. And so as a gear bonus, uh, I can choose a standard or limited upgrade of any type as a free upgrade during equipment, assignment, and requisition. So here's the uh, impulse armor. Uh, is It's light armor that is lined with vibrating proximity sensors, giving wearers advanced warning to jump for cover. Grants you plus one to your evasion. And also has the computerized uh, trait, which uh, 
Uh, Electromagnetic weapons ignore this uh, battle dress's bonus to evasion. So, remember I mentioned, uh, I can't remember if it was on stream or before we went uh, live, uh, but you're, when you're targeted by someone, you choose what defense you're using within the you know, what makes sense in the thing. So it might be toughness, it might be evasion. Switchback, for instance, is probably going to try and get the fuck out of the way of things because his evasion is going to be an 18 without taking into account his battle dress. Um, whereas, like, uh, Mayhem's got a 15 in uh, toughness without any armor. So that might be the thing he chooses to just take the hit as opposed to evading. You guys can always choose which of those two things, you, which of your defenses you want to use. And then you got that one um, for with a sonic uh, weapon, you've got the alternate to be able to target willpower as opposed to targeting one of those other things, stage show. So right. instead of that, you could target that. Damage is applied the same way uh, for these uh, across the weapons. There's not different health scores for things. Um, but um, yeah, it's neat. And then in, in combat, you're... What is it called? Cleverness? Cleverness, if you're trying to outwit someone, that's what you're targeting in your social skill uh, scenes, and then your willpower if you're trying to wear them down. And again, they sort of decide which way they want to defend on it. So, Cool. So I think our, 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 our characters together, are our Joes truly all uh, ready to take the, the field here? I think so. Yeah, you just got to do the equipment and everything. That's oh, wait, we didn't do... Toughness, evasion, willpower, and Oh, cleverness. sorry, yeah, I did that with switchback, but not for you guys. So you're, it's, uh, for each of those, it's 10 plus the relevant uh, stat. So toughness is 10 plus your strength score. Speed, uh, your uh, evasion is uh, 10 plus your speed score. Willpower is 10 plus your smarts score. And cleverness is 10 plus your social score. So that will be the... Easily injured uh, stage show and the easily bamboozled uh, mayhem. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then, so the last step they mention here is form a squad. Uh, All right. Your well, with your character completed, now it's time to bring the squad together. Uh, talk to your GM and again JM missed opportunity and uh, other players. I do like that they use squad for party. That's that's fucking cool. Yeah. Um, this is a great time to review the themes and general plot of your campaign or mission. In doing so, form bonds with the other characters by asking things like, "Which other squad mates have you served with before? Is there a squad mate you consider a friend? If so, why? Uh, why and how did that come about?" Is there a squad mate you have a rivalry with? If so, what's the rivalries? What what is the rivalry about, and how did it start? Uh, did one of your squad mates save your life before? So what do you, you don't have to answer all of those, but uh, what pages are these? This is on page one? forty four zero. What is there? Okay. And while you're doing that, let me grab your images here for your Joes, because I don't think I can drag and drop for uh, handouts the way we're doing it. Yeah, that just opens it up. Okay. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Let's see here. Can I... Ah, here we go. B. Um... Well, I mean, if, if Will's okay with this, I'd like to suggest that Stage Show and Mayhem have a connection. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, you mentioned maybe there was a show that I was doing um, where, you know, Cobra attacked, maybe with some kind of sonic weapon, and Stage Show was the one who was able to uh, dismantle it. But it also says, you know, did one of your squad mates save your life? Uh, maybe Mayhem was there at the show. And um, I, I don't know, Will can decide whether he was already in Joe at this time or what. None of you are and part of Joe yet. So this could have been oh, okay. how... okay. So how... no, he would have just been a soldier there. And uh, maybe he saved my life. You know, one of the Cobra guys was, you know, it's like one of those... He's got a shot. You know, he shoved me out of the way of a sniper shot or something as I was dismantling this thing and saved my life. And sort of that's how we come to know each other. Love it. And maybe like Switchback that. was at that show as well. Definitely. Uh, I, I actually I have this memory. I was I was in um, I was in Switzerland and we were visiting a, a place called Lucerne. 
and there was i had no idea we were just passing through but there was a music festival there and i saw saw people were wearing these p pins and i thought i want to get one of those pins as a souvenir <laughs> but it turned out that the pin when i asked a few people about the pin it turned out that the pin gave you access to the backstage area and because i had an american accent i think people assumed i was there maybe and and they gave me the uh pin somebody gave me their <laughs> pin so i just like got free access to the backstage and everything out of nowhere and that's sort of the the way i think that maybe this unfolded where i i met these guys that way yeah and i and if we want to play up the um uh one of the hang-ups too like maybe the uh uh, mayhem like after you guys sort of fought your way backstage or whatever else uh, or to, to the cobra device stage show and mayhem were a little too fucking of, of no yeah do you think they maybe we did this way and then perhaps you start <laughs> on this kind of thing and you're like guys guys you know <laughs> the bomb the yeah <laughs> so that's yeah so this is uh coming fresh from that kind of uh that kind of situation where you guys had um there we go we got everybody Okay, then what I'll do is I'll give you guys control over these. Uh, I am going to give you health bars on these so that... And name, hold on. Madison, don't make them so big. We need to have room for names here. Code names. Yeah, I never came up with a real name. Okay, let's see here. That's very G.I. Joe. <laughs> well, I don't know if I can tell you a single character's real name. Real name. <laughs> I, I guess Rocky Balboa, the names. trainer who trained for one issue. <laughs> yeah, I guess any of the yeah, any of the ones that are like the real people <laughs> ones, but I mean of the Joes, like Switchback. What is your? Oh yeah, I guess I'll take a look here. That's funny. Oh, you know, I'm getting that uh, fucking scrolling issue now too. Awesome. Uh, Stage Joe, what is your health right now? Uh, oh, sorry, my health oh, is so no, two. Uh, switch back, switch back. What's your health? Oh, three. Three, okay. There we go. Yeah, guys. Uh, Mayhem, what's your health? Five. Five, all righty. Get this going here. So everyone. Yep. And controlled by, there we go. So Will, you should have control over Mayhem. Nope, not all players. There you go, switchback. Yeah, I can click Jamie, on Jamie, you should have control over switchback. And what's uh, uh, stage shows um, health? To two? Uh, Jeff? Oh, sorry, what was that? Uh, what's the uh, state show's health? Two. Two, okay. So I think, I think, I think you should have control over his token as well. Let's see here. Yeah, okay, great. All right, so we got our Joes together. Good, good, good. All right, then, guys, uh, we've got half an hour left. Let's uh, let's start playing. No sense on standing on ceremony here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then, I will apologize. I intended to listen to a thing. I don't remember what Sergeant Slaughter's voice sounds like. I don't think, <laughs> I, I'm like, in my memory, I'm imposing like a Southern accent on it, but I don't think that's right. I think it's high volume, regardless. Yeah, yeah it's so. just real, like, <laughs> a lot of shouting. <laughs> okay. All right. And I guess for those listening at home, uh, we are, again, playing uh, the adventure out of the uh, core rulebook. Uh, so if you are intending on playing Snake Pit, there, this session will have spoilers in it, obviously. All right. Then, guys, let me grab everybody here. Guys, this is a top secret for JM eyes only. So. Mm -hmm. I guess G GM could be uh, GI Master, but. Um... Grunt Master. <laughs> Grunt Master, yeah. 
Uh, okay. There we go. So here's something I do really love about this uh, game as well. Oh, wait, did I remember to load these? Let me take a look here. I think I did. Another thing they do that's very clever with the... Um, uh, what do you call it with the licensed game? They encourage you to pick um, NPCs because they're, you know, when, when there's going to be um, uh, the mission assignments and stuff like that at the pit, uh, you're going to use NPCs from the Joes. And that's how they encourage you, in addition to fighting enemies that are going to be recognizable and whatnot, uh, they also, to give a constant appearance of characters that we love from the, the uh, source material, but not have them overshadow the characters, they encourage them to be sort of background or the people giving out the assignments in the pit. And that's, I think, a brilliant bit of advice because that's always a struggle you come with is like, well, how do I incorporate you know these characters in a meaningful way? Uh, they expressly give you an... Um, uh, reasons for it, uh, giving you exposition, giving you flavor, and giving support. Uh, and I, I don't want to say that it weighs, you know, heavily uh, towards my favor, but when they're giving you the suggestion of which NPC to use... <laughs> they do have snake eyes. <laughs> there. Oh, man. That's funny. It's actually the second. Uh, I, I didn't have a, uh, the original Snake Eyes uh, thing, Will, but it's the second one that I had, and I fucking loved it. Help that it has a. Uh, the wolf. You know, and after seeing like I wasn't that much of a you know a GI Joe fan, I will say like uh, I'm sure my love of dogs came from something else too. But he did have Timber in the thing, yes, and I fucking did. loved that. Yep. And one of the first uh, vehicles I got as a kid was the Jeep. <laughs> and the only vehicles I've ever owned have been Wranglers, so <laughs> it may have had a stronger influence over me than I uh, realized. All right, so, guys. Oh, boy. I have a treat for you. We have some block text. So, this is the Welcome to the Pit. Hang on, let me, guys, bring you over. To the pit. I'm just going to position your tokens a little on the side here uh, so that you guys can fully drink in the glory that is IDW's version of the pit. So, I love, love the Easter eggs in this too. <laughs> like the, uh, I can't remember what the heck this thing is called, but like that's an actual vehicle. Is that side of the striker, I think it's called. We got the, uh, that stupid artillery. I had that as a kid too, and I'm like, what a stupid fucking toy. It doesn't, I guess, be dragged by stuff. It's the tank. You lose all the missiles, you know, in the first week. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like, we didn't have pets. I couldn't even blame it on, like, a kid, uh, a dog making off with stuff. Break. I had the, like, jet, the ace one. Man, that was an amazing toy. Nice. Yeah, it was. Realistic yeah. missiles on that joker. With the wings that would go in and out. Yeah, the, yep. I think it was, like, an yeah. F-16 or whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. a good I don't know. Thing. I don't know. Or was it 14? I don't know. Yep, yeah, F-14 Tomcats. What yeah. Was it was that a was sweet cute. toy. Okay. And it was like, big, I love the thing about the Joe toys is like, they were life-size to the figurines. So you yeah. could like put them in there and like actually play with them. Mm. So, <clears throat> today changes everything. As of today, you are a member of G.I. Joe. Joining this elite mobile strike force cost you so much, but these sacrifices put you in a position to make the whole world a better place. As you sit in the back of this APC that picked you up driving along an underground highway beneath a desert in Utah, you try to let the potential of the future outweigh the thoughts of the past, the past left behind. Two hours ago, you met one another and, well, you met up with one another because you had... You sort of like, after you're getting off the plane, you're seeing one another kind of like, hey, it's, you know, from the show. Yeah. Um, and your G.I. Joe liaison, who is, perhaps unsurprisingly, no, Scarlet. <laughs> uh. 
Because uh, Snake Eyes, I don't think any of you guys took ASL as your uh, language. No. So it would be <laughs> challenging to have a chat with. Uh... So Scarlet uh, is one of the ones. And this is actually an illustration from the, the use in the book as well, which is super fucking cool. Um, she brought you there or met up with you at this um, remote location in Utah. Uh, led you below this nondescript shack where a military APC about the size of a basement, uh, about the size of the basement it was parked in, sat waiting for you. Scarlet got in the driver's seat and you guys all got in the back. Um, as you guys are driving along, uh, because it is, you got two hours of travel through this underground thing, and you're seeing like lights, whew, whew, you know, maybe every once half city block kind of thing. Uh, and she's going along at an incredible clip through here. This is like the badass military version of that lunatic uh, tunnel under uh, Las Vegas. <laughs> Less uh, colored lights now. But um, do any of you, uh, you know, how does the conversation sort of bring up? I'm assuming you guys did not, uh, apart from kind of a, hey, you know, when you guys first met up at this uh, place. Um, what do you guys say to one another? I feel like stage show is like, he's kind of out of his element here and he's not really sure. Like, you know, if we're on like military transport or whatever, like maybe we're not supposed to talk. You know he's like not even Sorry, sure. Jack, he's to, just to, like... to interrupt. Let's, let's back up before. Let's give you guys an opportunity to role play a little bit. Uh, get, get comfortable with the characters. Um, why don't we open our scene on this like blasted kind of, uh, you know, um, U Utah desert kind of thing with this rickety old shack out there. It's it's you know picture any scene from Breaking Bad where they're outside of uh, of Phoenix or whatever I can't remember if it's Phoenix or whatever city they're in, um, and it's just empty desert in every direction. And I think uh, which of you do you think who's got the lowest speed? Um, so it's either who do you think is the last to show up, stage show or mayhem? Who I would say probably. I would say probably more like Mayhem because stage show, like, you know, the classic thing with rock and roll bands is, you know, the band's always late, but the guy that's doing all the work, you know, he's on time. He's that's waiting exactly time. what I was going to say before. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. So, so I would say like Mayhem's probably last. So maybe in the opening, you know, in, in the opening, whatever, you know, like panel of our comic or, you know, a scene of our a cartoon or TV show or movie, what we're seeing is this rickety old shack and we can hear this kind of uh, diegetic music coming from inside and it's muffled, but it's some kind of, I don't know what kind of music we'd hear. Uh, and as we sort of pan around the side of the shack, we see stage show with headphones on. And why don't you tell us what kind of headphones he's got on there, Jeff, and what kind of music might we might hear that's coming through on the uh, uh, in the scene? They're probably like uh, retro, you know, full size <laughs> over headphones. I think that yeah, uh, yeah, just nice big ones. You know, you want to get that bass response. You want a full size speaker in there, and so. Uh, uh, and he's probably listening to like some seventies rock, maybe like some CCR or something like that. Nice. <laughs> Fortunate son is perfect. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> awesome. So you're doing that and uh, you're listening in, uh, you've got your, you know, uh, maybe small travel bag with you, but that's, that's everything. Otherwise you're probably dressing your civvies as well. Uh, at this point, um, you got that wild non-regulation beard and long hair. Totally. Yeah. yeah, and just listening to this stuff, uh, and what you can see is there's a trail of, sm of uh, dust coming down the road. And as we're getting closer, the diegetic music, meaning from the actual scene, changes, and we're hearing what song blaring out of this rental car, Mayhem? Oh, gosh. Let's see. He's probably listening to, he's probably got some Iron Maiden cranked. He's listening to, like, <laughs> Where Eagles Dare. Yeah, the Trooper, <laughs> the trooper Where Eagles Dare, something like that. Nice. Love it, and it's just wow! Like in, in as uh, in contrast to stage shows, kind of more muffled, you know, thing. We see you driving along, uh, and as he pulls up, uh, stage show would have been dropped off by like an Uber or something like that. Um, you got this crappy old rental car. It's it's clearly with the music that's blaring out of this. It has the you know, it's it's a small little uh, like maybe hatchback or, or coupe. Um, it has the look of like a, uh, if it wasn't for how impressive Mayhem is, you'd think it was like a teenager driving a mom's car, 
you know, and it's blaring their music out the uh, out the down windows. So what do we see as you uh, pull up and as the phew, the sound suddenly cuts off? Uh, this is maybe May where Stage Show and Mayhem, you, you recognize one another. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mayhem gets out. I mean, you know, and he's he's pretty he's pretty solid. He's not like, you know, super tall or anything. He's a, he's probably uh he's probably just under six foot tall. Okay. Um, but he's definitely thick and dense. He's he's around two hundred pounds. He gets out and he's his hair's not regulation, but it's not necessarily out of regulation either. Okay. It's just right at the point <laughs> of being <laughs> too long for active duty, but not completely. Have you seen um, uh, Generation Kill? No. No? Oh, fuck. It's it's awesome. The, the same writer yeah. who did The Wire. It's a miniseries okay. he did about based on a series of Rolling Stone articles about the this one, I think it were a ranger unit who uh, uh, were involved with the, the invasion of Iraq. Uh, but they've got a, um, uh, this is my military ignorance, but I can't remember what, what his uh, gunnery sergeant, I think, is is the, the guy who's thing. And he just, he's got this like complete into, like completely unintelligible accent in it, but he keeps yelling at people, police that moustache! That thing's not regulation! Yep. So, There's always that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's special forces. They can they can get away with a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's great too because there's there's a later scene in it too. Like he just comes across a complete fucking asshole, and he, mm -hmm. he later tell, tells someone he says, you know, uh, if you find that the, the troops are getting a little, uh, you know, uh, down in the dumps, let them know, and I'll get them riled up with a grooming standard. So like yeah. he has a role that he's playing in this. It's not just being an asshole, although he yeah. is an unrepentant asshole. It's great. It, it really, yeah, I, I can't recommend that series enough. I, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, a lot of great actors who end up in a bunch of shit afterwards, too, for HBO stuff. And it's only like four or five episodes. Mm. Um, but anyway, um, so you get out. Yeah. And, and uh, what do you guys say to one another? Now that you recognize it. Holy smokes, man. Never thought I'd see you in a place like this. What are you doing out here, man? How's everything? Um, Awesome. Was contacted uh, G.I. Joe. Meet out here in the desert. Really? Yeah. Huh. I don't know what they want with me. Well, but, I don't know either, but I mean, that's that's why I'm here. Interesting. Huh. Our scene well, would shift now. Wait, I just want to add one more element because yes. I want to make it a little recurring thing between our characters. He's going to be like, you know, I still owe you, man. You name the show, I'll get you the tickets. <laughs> That's all right, man. No, they're coming. Those tickets are coming. Uh, our scene shifts now in our the film version of our campaign. Rather than seeing it through, you know, like a regular camera, we now have a view through a sniper scope. <laughs> And, uh, Gene, why don't you tell us where Switchback has been hiding? Um, he is probably just, like, uh, in, in a, maybe on a nearby, um, if there's any raised or elevation, uh, maybe he's sort of just up on the highest peak, you know, trying to, that's just where he naturally wants to go is on the highest peak and look around. So he's yeah. probably looking down on them from some a fair distance, but uh, he, can, he can see what's going on down there. Yeah, so now you can see who's, uh, you, you saw a stage show, show up before and you're like, okay, I know that guy. And then you saw Mayhem show up as well. Um, unsurprisingly, Switchback was the first one to get here and set himself up in a nice sniper perch in the event that this was something hinky. So Switchback, what do you do to introduce yourself to everyone or to at least let your presence be known? I think, yeah, I think he would be, um, struck by the irony of running into these two out here in the middle of nowhere and um i think he would let his guard down and get down to their level to uh sort of wave and make sure that they see him and uh as he approaches he'd say you guys got the backstage passes too huh what, what's this all about this gi joe's is this another one of your your uh big bands there there stage show <laughs> <laughs> no band I ever heard of. <laughs> well, uh, this should be interesting. And then you hear uh, a woman's voice from inside this shack uh, who says, Gentlemen, 
You want to stand around in the sun all day working on your tan, or you want to go to work? Uh, work, I guess. And you step in and you see this uh, very serious looking uh, and attractive uh, woman uh, in, I, th I think she's probably in her like late 20s. Um, but the most noticeable f uh, thing is her brilliant red hair. You never met this woman before. Um, and she doesn't have any uh, insignia uh, marked on her, like no, no recognizable uh, marking on this. Um, but she asks you to step inside. And I think what will uh, end our character creation and first session with is you guys going down below, you find this APC below that will be transporting you underground and will leave you heading off to the pit for the first time. I love it. So, uh, for those listening at home, we'll be back in two weeks' time to actually play Snake Pit uh, for the first time. But, uh, guys, any thoughts on uh, character creation for G.I. Joe? No, it's, it's, it's um, I mean, it's fairly straightforward. Yeah, I thought, I liked, I liked how after we got to a certain point, you could, you could see the character concept connecting to everything else. Um, so I felt better about it. I, I wasn't wrapping my head around it until we kind of stepped through it together. So I really appreciate doing that together um, and seeing all of your concepts and your characters take shape. It, it's, everyone's got a great concept and theme. So it's, it's gonna be really neat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned concept there twice. I think like the core of making a character in a game like this is really spending time to think about what concept for a Joe you want. It's a lot different than a lot of the other games we make where I like to let things randomly fall. This is like, I think you really need to come in with a sketch or you're gonna struggle. Like you probably could just go through it cold, but you'd end up with, you know, generic soldier a probably as opposed to sort of the more directional method that we all used yeah. where you end up with someone that kind of fits your niche which is the way that the joes are designed i mean yeah. one guy his whole gimmick is he just uses a blowtorch i mean you know <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're very narrow if you you know when you look at the joes yeah. really and their skill set yeah yeah, and it's it's and that's a great point because it'll it'll be an interesting contrast. Tomorrow we're doing care gen for uh, a traveler uh, short campaign, and travelers totally different. It, it's like you 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 uh, will do yourself a disservice if you have an idea of what you want the eventual character to be because it's just not gonna it's just not gonna come out that way the way that the character generation works. So yeah, that's a really good point that it's, this yeah. is a very different approach where you want to have that clear vision and you have full control over how things uh, come together. Um, I, I love how, I mean, you guys all had good ideas of how the characters were going to function, but I, I, the characters have really interesting mechanics. They don't feel like, maybe we'll see how things play out in, in, uh, at the table, but they don't feel like first level characters in the way they do sometimes in level based games. You guys seem to have a good selection of different uh, things that you're good at, you're bad at and whatnot. Like you've got enough things in your character sheet to distinguish each other from uh, the other, from your, your, your yeah. team, your squad mates. Yeah. Yeah, so cool. Well, I'm looking forward to trying to kill you with some Cobra characters. Um, <laughs> so we'll be back in uh, two weeks' time for the first mission for this squad. Uh, but until then, uh, as is always the case, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, the, the game, or the campaign we'll be playing with this, uh, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section of the video, and I'll endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. You can also find a link down below to the Dungeon Musings Discord server in the description of this video. Uh, we have channels there dedicated for uh, most of the games we run on the channel. We don't have one for this because we just started running this, and we'll see. There is an assorted games uh, channel where we've been talking about uh, G.I. Joe on it, but uh, you're more than welcome to join us over there. There's a terrific community and a bunch of channels beyond just what we run on the channel. There's a finder group channel where you can find people to play with. There's, um, gosh, I mean, there's, so we have people who regularly share, you know, uh, the deals on uh, trying your RPG or other things, update on, uh, you know, conventions around the country, around uh, North America or in the, uh, in uh, Europe. Um, there's also, um, yeah, just a terrific group of people over there. You are more than welcome to join us. Um, there is also a link down below 
to I'm telling the man uh, to our friends at Noble Knight Games. Noble Knight Games is the preeminent unionized retailer of hard to find and out of print RPGs in North America. Uh, I've actually got a couple of my books through them um, for this game. Um, there is uh, not only do they have a great actually I think I got all these books from them and I got the PDFs from uh, Renegade. Um, not only do they have an amazing selection of new uh, RPGs, board games, and card games, they also have a terrific selection of hard to find and auto print RPGs. Uh, and if they don't have in stock what you're looking for, you can often put it on a want list and uh, they will uh, send you an email when that comes in. Um, if you make a purchase of $10 or more through their website, be sure to enter the code THE MUSE, all caps, all one word, and you will save yourself 10% on the purchase. Uh, don't forget, like I did with my last one, <laughs> so be sure to enter that code and save yourself $10% uh, on your purchase. Uh, there is also a link down below uh, to something called Heroes Save Villages. That's the charity fundraising campaign we run on the channel. Anna, hey! There's not even anyone outside, I don't think. Like, we're not... <laughs> <laughs> so I thought the snow like, guys with me here. It's time to go. There was a sound she heard She outside. just knows, Kev. She knows the outro. Oh, she knows. Uh, no good. joke. She knows precisely the outro because when normally when she's yeah. not barking at the door, she'll come over, you know, and come in because she knows it's time she can go back outside again. Yeah. It's oh. minus eighteen here today, so she, I don't think she wants to go outside too uh, quickly. Um, but uh, there's also a link down below to uh, something called Heroes Save Villages. That's the charity fundraising campaign we run on the channel. It benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity, a really amazing organization active in over 130 countries, benefiting over 80,000 orphaned and abandoned children. We've just kicked off our new campaign uh, for fundraising for 2023. All donations that go through that link go directly to SOS Children's Villages International. None of it goes to the channel or any other middleman. It just goes to help out the kids who benefit from their services. And as small ways of saying thank you for that, uh, our next charity raffle for 2023 will be uh, on uh, in uh, end of June of 2023, every $25 Canadian that you donate through that link will give you one chance to win the grand prize or one of the other great prizes in our next charity raffle. Uh, in addition, uh, every 20, uh, if you donate $25 uh, between uh, January 1st, 2023, and uh, whenever our, these sessions are, you will have an opportunity to vote on our charity campaign that we're running this year. Uh, rather than running individual sessions like we have in the past, we are gonna be running a linked ongoing campaign throughout the year and donors will have an opportunity to vote on elements of those stories and all of those adventures and how it changes in between. We're, we haven't uh, given full details of it yet. I'm, I, we will be having voting starting quite soon though because our first session will be in February. Um, so in addition to winning some great gaming stuff in our next charity raffle and having a chance to vote on, on our shape, what we're playing on the channel, you also have an opportunity to, uh, oh, and we have one really cool prize uh, from this year that we have not given away before. So that more about that uh, soon, but, um, you also get a chance to help out some kids who could really use some help. So, uh, all three great things. Last thing I will say is a huge thank you to our brave Joes who uh, showed up today. These are really interesting and very easy to, to you know, to, uh, to picture characters, guys. So, Jamie, Will, and Jeffrey, thank you so much uh, for playing today and uh, for creating such interesting characters. Had fun. Yeah, Love me fun. too. Um, then... For those listening at home, we'll be back uh, underneath the deserts of Utah and heading into the pit in two weeks' time. Until then, we hope that we gave you a few hours to take your mind off the troubles of our world and learn about the troubles that uh, I've... Um, not troubles, I guess. Learn about the Joes who will soon take up the fight against Cobra in uh, the coming weeks and months. Uh, and until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy gaming.